All right, here we are live. Um, so what I'm doing here is I've been spending a lot of time over the past, um, I don't know, six, eight months now uh, doing a lot of painting of cars for iRacing. And uh, we're going to kind of continue that, but I decided, well, maybe instead of just painting these, uh, you know, on my own, I could just do videos of them. And then, uh, if anybody wants to see, you know, how, how it works or what I do, uh, then you can see it. So it might be really boring for a lot of you, but you know, at the same time, uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you don't really know where to start, uh, maybe it'll help you out. I don't know. So <laughs> We'll see. If it catches on, then uh, we'll do it as a video series and uh, just keep adding to it as we go. Um, and maybe just kind of start off with maybe showing you guys what it is that uh, that I've been painting so far. So uh, these are all the cars that I've been doing for iRacing loaded up to trading paints. And... Uh, essentially, you know, the original goal with this was just to paint cars for 2003 season, um, which a shameless plug here, uh, Winstell is going to be running a 2003 uh, league starting in 2023. Uh, and if you're interested in racing these cars against real people, then you can sign up over there. It's a $10 entry fee, but you get 24 races the whole year. Um, it's go or go home qualifying if you're not in the top 35. There's some things uh, about it, but it's really fun. They they got loose setups and everything, and it makes it really uh, a fun time, and it's really awesome to see all these cars out there. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, uh, not to stray too far, but basically that's kind of what this started out as. And, uh, you know, they... Uh, they changed the ARCA car, so I had a bunch of these cars painted for the old model. All these ones here. And uh, all of them into the trash can when iRacing did the update. So that was kind of disappointing. But we've uh, we've gotten through everything now. All the cars, all the numbers that had a paint have a paint now. And so we're doing secondary schemes. So what we're going to do here is actually uh, we're gonna paint Ken Schrader's. It's gonna be an easy paint today. This is not a difficult one. We'll do some difficult ones at some point. But uh, I actually just downloaded the new version of GIMP, so I get to familiarize myself a little bit with this. Um, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna paint Ken Schrader's uh, Bam Racing Dodge for Rockingham. And he really only drove this car one time, and it was uh, kind of very similar to the old uh, BAM Racing Dodge that Shauna Robinson drove. So if we look at like this one here, um, we can see it's got the yellow BAM. Uh, she had a different font on it and things like that. Uh, so it's like they held it over, and I, I saw a couple of the teams that did this uh, early on. Uh, but something something along these lines. So that's what we're making today. Hopefully it'll be kind of an easy one. And I'll just be going along here and doing it. Um, and then we should... So I'm kind of starting at the beginning. Basically what I'm doing first here, first thing I got to do is find pictures of this car. Um, again, it was driven in one race, and it was Schrader when... He was with the 49, and they weren't very good, so this wasn't like a very popular car. So it's going to be uh, hard to find. But some of what I'm going to do here is like tell you, well, okay, when you're looking for a car, what are some, some things you can do trying to find a picture of this? So uh, we do have, though, so so if I let's look up on... Uh, you know, and there's a couple sites you can go to. So Motorsport Images is obviously one of, like, the super common ones to go to. Uh, same with Getty Images. Like, those are kind of your go-to just for initial, like, where do I find a picture of a car? These are the first places I would go. 
Yeah, we're painting again. That's that's uh, we don't stream racing anymore. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. So now we just paint. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do here, uh, for no good reason. Did I get yelled at? No, no, no one watched my stream to yell at me. <laughs> so, um. All right, so let's see if we can find it. So the way I'm going to do this first is I'm going to look up Schrader 2003. And we can come up with a bunch of pictures of Ken Schrader. But we'll see very quickly none of the ones that we're actually looking for. Which, again, when you're looking for uncommon cars is not common to find. So... So let's try it a different way. We can look up 2003 Subway 400. And again, he, you know, Schrader rode at the back for the most part, so he's going to be hard to find. But if we kind of search through here, we might get lucky. Nothing there. Uh... Nothing good there. Ah, okay. All right. We got one. Yeah, I know. It's it's like a weird time of year. <laughs> I've been trying to do a little bit, but mostly I just done uh, NR night, and then Winstall's done some practice races I've done. But that's all I've really done. I haven't done much racing. All right, there it is. Uh, and what we can see, the, the only reason why this is important is, again, so we've got a yellow logo, BAM Racing, yellow door numbers. And they actually changed the number font. It's really hard to see in this one. But uh, the new number font really looked more like this. Previous year number font was different. Uh, so... Uh, if you need a number font, the first place you're going to want to go to is uh, Big Evil Racing. Which, I knew I was going to be painting this car, so I already did that. Let me minimize this out. I um, already did that, so we can go and open that up. Which, actually, I think I already opened it. Yeah, so, so Big Evil Racing is kind of the place to go if you want numbers that's like the first place i would go um there are some other places to get them and if you're doing something really obscure you might have to make your own so that sucks when you have to do that but sometimes you do all right but obviously they took this uh from 2004 so it's got the schwann's background and everything which is not what we want so we're gonna have to get rid of some of that all right so let's see if we can get a a close-up of this number here okay so it's got a white outline a black a white black white and I'd say hmm so that's you know we could probably well we won't need the white outline on the outside though because the car's white so we can take that off. So that'll be fine. All right. So the one thing we want to change is the color here to that yellow. Um, let's take another look if we can at that yellow. If we can find a good... Now we know it's the same yellow as what Shauna Robinson was driving there. That's kind of a weird picture to be honest with you it's just a little uh, somebody did this they've got a very bright yellow there but I don't think that's yeah all right here's one here's a yellow oh that sucks um, oh, here it is on Getty all right let's get to that See if we can find that. Shoot. 
I thought that would come up easier. Uh, all right. Let's do it like that and see if that'll pull it up. And it's not great. Okay. So we get to use a little bit of guesswork. I would say that's not the fully brightest yellow that we could pick. That's not going to be it. That's going to be a little bit, just a hair darker. So let's go with, if we make the yellow full, then we'll back it down just a bit here. A little bit darker than that. And uh, one way to do this, so uh, a good way to to so I could use the fill tool, um, but sometimes that causes some problems. So let's go ahead and try it. And see the problem that it can cause is, it, you see this aliased edge? You, you kind of want to not have that if you can avoid it. In this case, it probably wouldn't matter much, but let's try and do it this way instead. So we're gonna go to colorize. And so what I would do is I would go here and I can copy the HTML code. It might show up right here. Can you not use paint and pull the color that way? Uh, off the picture directly. So the only problem with doing that is like when you look at these cars in the light, a lot of times the light is, is different on the picture. And so when you start trying to eyedropper it away, it can get really hard to get exactly what you think you're getting. So I've just had better luck eyeballing it. Sometimes, depending on the the on what it is. Um, so like, let's say you were taking I'll, I'll use a Dewalt logo for example. Sometimes that is out there, and you kind of know that they're going to use that same color, so you can find it and you can get that color code. But with something like this, where it's basically non-existent. Um, you kind of have to eyeball it. So you can do it the way you said. It's almost always going to be like a washed out color though, and you're going to end up not liking it. So it's just the way I like to do it. Um, if you've used the color, it's going to be in these boxes here. Um, so since I actually clicked that, it showed up here. But sometimes when you first select it, it's not. So I'll just copy this HTML code just in case. Uh, and then what I can do is I can go and I can colorize. And you see it's automatically going to change to whatever this is. But when I open that up, I can paste in my HTML code. Now a big thing that happens is it doesn't come out right initially. It's always this darker or lighter sometimes it's right but a lot of times it's wrong but if you bring up your lightness there you can kind of get it closer to how you want um, so let's go with that's almost a little too bright so we're going to go with uh, 0.250 eh. yeah I think Oh, maybe it's point three. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent there. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's what we're going with. So then, um, a couple things can happen here. So sometimes you might want to keep all these different layers. And if you do, then what you can do is you can actually take this whole thing, drag it over to your picture, drop it right on your picture. Uh, before I do that, hold on. So what I've got here selected is this Goodyear, and you can see the box here. I like to select something that's got the entire selection, and it'll drop it basically in the middle of it. So again, I take the whole layer group here, and I just drag it. People get confused because they try and drop it in over here and it doesn't work. You actually have to drop it into your picture here. Just like that. 
okay? Um, now, if you do this, sometimes then people want to use their grab tool, um, which now I get to find because they've changed this. So here we go. And they try and do this, and oh, wait. Now it's grabbing just that top layer. Well, that's not what you want, okay? So what you can do, though, to move that whole layer group is use your arrow keys. So you can actually arrow key this around, which is a little slow, but it moves your entire group as one unit. The other thing you can do is you can use the these chain tool here, and if you hook everything together, then you can actually grab and drag it that way. Uh, just remember to unhook, <laughs> because what will happen is you'll end up leaving something on there, and then later on you'll chain something together and you'll be moving stuff that you don't even realize you're moving. So it's a very useful little tool and a way to do things, but you know it's you just got to kind of be careful with, with what you do. All right. Um, so we've got this here. Uh, we know the roof number is going to be bigger. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this. And if we duplicate the whole layer group, it duplicates everything. Okay. So we'll call this 49R. <clears throat> and, uh, okay, so what I just did there is I cropped the content. You right click, layer, crop to content. That makes it just everything, the, the box size here, the minimum. And the reason I want to do that is because when I size this, I kind of want to make sure everything's always relatively the same. If I leave it uh, different, if I leave uh, edges to it, then I don't really know exactly how tall I'm making things. So that's why I want to do it this way. And I'm just going to move that down there. So I know typically I want these things usually to be around 225 height. We could take another look at that car. And again, this is a slightly different car. So let's see if we can find. And we know this is not the right one to look at either. So let's see if we can find. I don't think I have a side shot. Well, I can kind of see it there. But I'm going to wager that it's going to be very similar to the other 2003 cars, which is, again, not that one, <clears throat> but like this one. So let's just use this one. So, yeah, it's, it's fairly tall. So let's see when we set this to a scale of... Uh, the other thing is when I do this interpolation, I like to do no halo. Um, just gets a little bit better result. Let's make it 250 first. Okay. And I think that's going to be a little too tall. So 225 is usually what I end up making them. And that's looking pretty decent there. Uh, let's take a look at one other thing. So we can see it kind of goes... You gotta be a little careful. Uh, so when we're painting this car, this is this is a scan of a Xfinity car from 2009. Uh, they're slightly different from the Cup car. Uh, the wheelbase is a little longer on the Cup car, and, and where I think the big difference is is this section here where these contingencies are. It seems to me where the extension of that mostly happens. So a lot of times what you'll find is when you're putting in your contingencies, these ones are really tight over here. Or they don't want to fit or whatever. And you kind of just got to deal with that because you're really trying to paint um, a different body onto a, a, a slightly different body. And then you got to remember, too, that all these cars were basically custom made. So there's just differences. There's differences from car to car. There's differences from uh, different tracks. You know, if you're looking at a super speedway car it's going to be different than a speedway car so you got to keep all that in mind when you're when you're doing this but uh anyway that's that's something we'll have to contend with here 
But you can kind of see they did basically got this 49 going from edge of the pillar here back to about middle of the B pillar. So we're going to see. And, and what we have to do now, and if you've painted anything on iRacing, you'll know this, but if you're completely brand new to this, <clears throat> you need to open up iRacing so you can export your file to to the actual sim and see this in the paint viewer. So let's go to my content, Arca car, we'll view paint car. All right, and that's just my stock iRacing setup because it has no car file in there. Um, <clears throat> the way this works is really actually simple to export. So what you're going to do is you're going to export as, and then you want to go to the correct spot, which, well, let me do this like I was doing it from, from the jump here. So I would go to Documents, iRacing, paint and then you have to find your car and a lot of people get confused here because they don't know what it is if I'll go to stock car Impala and things like that that's you, the, in this particular case it's stock cars to Chevy for the ARCA car uh, I think the naming system is pretty outdated from this being a really old car on iRacing in terms of well it's a new model but it's an old car from in terms of when they edit it. So they've gotten a lot better with their naming systems now, but back then you got Stock Cars 2, which was basically supposed to say Nationwide Series <laughs> uh, Chevy. I think Stock Cars Impala is the COT, if I'm not mistaken. So I think that's what that is. But Stock Cars 2 Chevy is our, our ARCA car. All right, uh, and so what I did is I actually put this just makes it easier because so if you have trading paints and you are using your car and you're constantly loading in and out then it's going to always be deleting your files and I don't want to have to go in there and type car num my number dot tga every time so I put one in there with a little dash and that way I can just select it and then I just delete my dash and then I can export it <clears throat> I also have one in there for car spec um, if we do a spec map, we'll use that. We're not going to need a spec map on this car, probably. Although we might. We, we might do it on every car now. Um, but it's not going to be super exciting if we do. Uh, but this car is white. <laughs> this car's not an exciting car. But uh, that's what we do. So we go car num, and then we can just drop it right there. And export... Uh, fine and it's going to auto load so there's our 49 which you know about middle of the pillar there um, right to about the front so that's about where we want it so I'm going to call that about how we'd like it to look um, so then let's go ahead and duplicate this and I don't think that works if I do it that way, so we'll just do it this way so we can move it fast. Drag it on up. All right. Uh, again, if you're completely new to GIMP, I'm just walking this through as if you don't know anything. So uh, there's two recommendations that I have here. Uh, one is that the more organized you are, the easier it is, uh, because most likely you'll find yourself going back to your paints at some point. Uh, so we've got 49R copy here. If we double click this, it'll let us change the name. So we're gonna call it 49L. You should have your own naming system for things because then eventually you'll know. I just tend to put L and R behind different things and that way I know if it's on the left or the right. I might put LR for left rear, uh, LF for left front, LR door for left rear of the door. You know, just 
you can have all kinds of naming systems. It's whatever you are comfortable with, but as long as you have one, um, that's the key to it. I'm going to look at this again. I don't really like our... I don't really like our... It's like too much green in our color. So maybe we'll take the green out. Uh, all right, so this is why I copied it over the way I did. Um, if I did it as one solid number, then I would have to go back over here, fix it here, copy it. But this way I can actually just recolorize the yellow part of this. Okay, and it's way too bright, so we're going to darken it up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really what we want. Okay. Uh, and then I just have to remember, so I did negative three because i got to do this on, on all these now. Okay. <clears throat> and one more. Colorize. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So I've got that one in place. I've got this one in place. But, of course, this left one is facing the wrong direction. So the easy fix. And you can see, so um, the way the groups work, if I select an individual, it actually has this yellow box. You can kind of see it here. It's got it's got a little yellow highlight with those black lines. That's the individual part of this. Your group is has a blue line. Um, it's really it just shows you where it is, but it kind of is important for for one other thing. So, um, and we'll come back to that. But <laughs> that's what it is. Just so you know. All right. So I want to rotate this, so I can right click it. And I've got the whole group selected, so I can go to Layers, Transform, and then I can rotate all these different ways. I want to spin it completely around, so I'll just rotate 180. All right, and it's done. All right, uh, our original number that we copied over here that I was using to copy around, I'm going to rename it to 49 Roof. And... I'm going to also remember to crop this to content because I did not do that earlier on the big one. So you can see it just cut it down just a little bit. All right. And then I want to layer, transform, rotate 180 because this should be facing this direction. And then I want to uh, scale this down. So uh, these are 225. That's going to be way too small for the roof. So let's go with a width of, say... 500 and this little thing here connects it so it's going to keep it square so it automatically changes this if i ever wanted to just narrow it up or, or whatever it changed the shape of it if i click that it disconnects it so then that would just narrow it but it would keep the same height but for now i want to keep that connected we'll scale all right and i think that's probably a little bit narrow. Um, but let's take a quick look at one thing. So we can see here that it's, and you see this in most of the times with, with NASCAR, the number stretches all the way from one side of the roof to the other. Um, and it takes up a lot of the roof space, but not always entirely. And so a lot of times we do have to narrow the number up. This is way too short, so we're going to control Z, undo what we just did. <clears throat> and actually, I want to... So I wanted to move it, and I'm hitting my up arrow. It's not working. That's because I need to select the, the move tool. And I can move it. So, all right. Um, so what I can do now is right-click it. 
layer scale and I'm just gonna work on the height I think the heights not too far off let's make it 450 okay so that looks like it's probably a little bit too tall still but let's export it and just see and I want to wait for that to, to work sometimes if you have a really big file with tons of layers it takes a little while so all right so obviously too big we want it to go right between these roof rails and it's it's too large so we're going to go ahead and bring that down by another 50 we'll make it 400 and it will export and we'll look okay so now we can make the case that it's it's very close but you can see it's still touching about here so if I move it up to clear that nine it's gonna be too tall so let's go ahead and shrink it up uh, by another let's do 375 and export okay so it's pretty close here we got a little room up so we actually will go ahead and just bring it up which on our template is down we did seven clicks seven pixels of movement and that looks pretty good okay so the the height is right but obviously we're way too wide so what we're going to do is we're going to start narrowing it up and we're going to go to that layer scale but instead of keeping this attached we're going to take that off we want width so across and let's just shoot again for I'd say about 500 and that's going to narrow it up quite a bit let's export it and just take a quick look yep so quite a bit narrower let's center it out export okay it's pretty good and you could even make the case that it's a little too wide based on this picture right because it should stop a little bit short so we'll probably just shorten it up just a touch more now when I go to this and I layer and I scale it's gonna reset this every time so I still gotta click that off and we'll make it 360 Oh, and I did the wrong thing, so we're going to undo it. Try it again. Do the width, and we're going to make it uh, instead, uh, let's make it 5 or 480. I changed my mind too, so that's good. Let's export, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, all right, look at that. So now we got our number in place. Everything's fitting pretty nicely there. And these numbers are looking pretty good. This one's a little high. I don't really want it that high up on the door. So let's go back and select our 49L, that one. And we'll just use our arrow key again. Now you notice what happened there. I hit it to move my arrows, and it just moved here. So sometimes when you switch to layers, you actually have to click it. And you got to be a little careful when you do this, because when you click things, they like to move. So sometimes... Just make sure we are looking at what you click and that nothing moved. And now I can move it with my arrow keys. And let's export. Okay. So that's looking pretty decent. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got our numbers in place. Um, I, I kind of have a way of doing this I usually start with the numbers just because they're the most centered thing this doesn't mean you're completely done with them um, you could end up needing to adjust them a little bit as you as you make things you may you know this car again this car is so basic this car has <coughs> has no paint it's just white so it's going to be very basic and easy um, but if you are adding lines in you may realize that you know after I've done this, I don't really like the way this looks. So you could end up going back to it, but <clears throat> just to get you so you're, you're, you're just like a baseline start. Getting the numbers in place is usually step one for me. Um, and this is also not including that 
this car should have numbers on the tail light and on the headlight. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do those real quick just to, to kind of show that. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, what am I looking for? This. All right. So I like to save occasionally because you never know when your stuff's going to crash. And what we're going to do here is, is actually two things. So we've got 49 left, 49 right, 49 roof. Now, again, organization is key. So we're going to make a new layer group. And whenever you do that and you're selected on a layer, it actually puts it inside of, see, it's with my, but I don't want it inside. I actually want it outside. So I'm going to drag it, and now it's there. And we're going to call this numbers. And the reason why I like all my numbers into a number group is number one, it's a little more organized. Number two, if I want to make a SIM stamp number version of the car, I can click my, see these eyes here are what allow your layers to be visible. So I can actually click them off one at a time. Okay. But I can also turn all of them off together. And when I do a SIM stamp number, I want to turn them off so I can export it easily and not have to hunt everything down. <clears throat> so that's why I do it that way. All right. Uh, so there's two things we need to do. Uh, number one, we need a pit sign. So with the old Arca car, there wasn't a pit sign. And you just got the roof number. Well, now there's a pit sign, so we need to make that. So we're just going to duplicate that, that R layer. <clears throat> and I'm going to call it 49 pit. Uh, it's too large for that. But I just know from experience, I'll do a layer and scale. The max width I feel like works is about 190. So I'll scale it down to that. And then I'm just going to arrow key it on over there. And if I had shrunk, if I had made this just one number, and you can do that, you know, once you know it's finalized, you can merge your layer group. Um, but I'm just not 100% sure that I'm I'm there yet, so that's why I'm not doing it. But then I could drag and drop it a little easier, or I could chain it all together <clears throat> and drag it that way, which you know maybe I'll do. Okay, so that's on the pit sign. That's what it would look like. We can always decide if we want to make that look like something later but for now I don't all right now I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to call this uh, 49 tail light and for this I actually am going to chain all this together so that I can drag this how I want it because We're going to go up here. So this is the great thing about layers. I haven't really got into it, assuming that you know something about it, but you, if you don't, <coughs> layers go underneath things. So that's why when it's going through here, you can see these numbers going underneath all of this stuff. Uh, this has to go on top of the tail light. And the tail lights, you know, for the most part, nothing else really goes over them. Um, except sometimes a contingency or something might, but uh, the number does. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to set it right here for the moment. And then um, I'm actually going to turn off my chains so I don't forget. And what I'm going to do is I've gone up here and at the top of my, my stuff, I make a group that's headlight and taillight numbers. I'm going to drag that all the way up and put that into that. And now we can see it's on top of it. Um, for the most part, usually the height of this is about 50. That's what I've found is typically the height I like. But it can be different car to car. The other thing that can be difficult is actually finding a picture of the back of a car. Sometimes they're just not out there can be really difficult but fortunately we found one all right so let's take a look at this where's where's that crashed there we go and we'll blow it up 
All right. So we could see this is goes between the white and the amber kind of right in there. So let's use that as a guide. And we're going to go ahead. Let's so let's go ahead and just guess at it. Let's make it 50. And see how it fits in there. Which actually not too bad. Let's take one more look at that picture. And it's all distorted because so it's actually like right at the bottom in the middle there. So we'll go back to GIMP and let's bring that down. I like that. That looks pretty good. So then I can export. And there it is. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, so the lighting is so harsh right now. I don't know. I guess just because the car is white. Um, not sure I could do anything about that. So it is what it is. All right, so now we need one for the headlight. And the easiest thing to do is just duplicate this. And we're going to rename it to 49 headlight. And again, I'm just going to chain these together so that I can move it quickly. Drag it on over. If you need to go somewhere, if you just kind of go to the edge of your screen, it goes up and down. So, easy way to get around. And we're going to put this on the headlight. And then we can unchain it because we're not going to move it that way anymore. Alright, so we need a picture of the front of it now, which I saw one. There we go. Alright. So what we're going to notice a lot of times is the numbers are not straight up and down. Um, they can be kind of crooked or, or whatever. So we're trying to duplicate that on the Dodge. They usually put it in this section of the light. And it's about halfway up. These are often a little smaller. Okay. But one thing that's kind of interesting to note about these, <laughs> the whole front of the Arca car is just kind of a it's kind of goofy. It's kind of messy. Uh, you would think putting this here that it would be good, like position-wise. It's going to be really jacked up looking, and I'm going to export it just to demonstrate that. There we go. Okay. So it's already it's very sideways compared to what we want. Now, for this particular car, believe it or not, that may be almost exactly what we want. It's a little too tall. We want it to be just about half as tall as the light, but the way it's angled in there, a lot of times they're not angled that way, they're more straight up and down. Um, but let's go ahead and bring it down, and we're going to shrink it down by about, let's make it 40 height. Let's see how that looks. Export. I almost think it's a little low there. Yeah, a little low. All right, so let's bring it back up a bit. Uh, this is very often just a game of inches. Ah, there we go. Looks pretty good. So that's our numbers now in place where we want them. <coughs> um, incidentally, I haven't talked about it. This is the Dodge temp template that Tyler Dalton made. Um, and he did a great job at it. It looks really good. You can get it on the forum. Uh, I highly recommend that you go there. There is a spot on the forum for the Arca car specifically for all the templates and things. Now, uh, the, the forum post is sticky, but it's pretty messy because people just kind of post the things in there somewhat randomly, so you have to comb through it. <clears throat> define what you want. I know Tyler put this one in there. Um, I put one in for the uh, 03 Taurus, uh, which was originally created for the old car by Justin Rowden, and I, I messed around with that one um, to make it work, and it, I feel like it came out pretty good. And then uh, Dustin Weingarter's 03 Grand Prix templates in there, 
And again, that was one he made for the old car. I just adjusted it so that it works with a new car and think it, again, looked pretty good. I was able to make that look pretty good. So those three are in there. Uh, the Chevrolet template, I'm not sure. I have one. Uh, I got it from some guys on Discord who sent it to me, but I don't know if it's posted in the forum as well. Um, these things could be of varying quality, so you, you got to be careful. You want to only get the ones that uh, <laughs> that are good um, because some people were just originally just taking the old ones and slapping the 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 stickers on it and it did not look right and uh dustin actually uh or i'm sorry uh uh and I'm, I'm blanking here but uh when when tyler made this one uh he redid it from scratch and you could tell because he did just a good job with it looks really good so um so anyway, if you try and use just the Impala template for those old cars, it does not look good. So the templates are out there. Um, I know Liam Brotherton's made a very nice uh, him and, and and he was working with a couple other guys, Josh Palmieri and uh, uh, Davin Cornelius, I believe, making that template. And they did a great job on that one too. Um, there's some late, late model uh, Arca templates, you know, for some of these cars like the. Monte Carlo and and uh, the Toyota and stuff like that that look pretty good. But um, anyway, just realize that not all templates are made the same, so you want to make sure you're getting the, the best ones out there. Um, I always like to make sure when I post these things, I post all my stuff on Trading Paints. It's always free. I never charge for, for any, any of my paints or anything like that. I just try and make them for the community. So... Um, but I always try and credit whoever made the template and everything because without the template, man, this would be so much harder. Yeah, <laughs> it would be so much more time-consuming to get it uh, to, to be this. So um, just always try and take that time. So anyway, um, so this is looking pretty good here. Default has this on the template, which is probably on the car. And we take a look and yeah. It's, got, it's on the car. <clears throat> that one's white. Let's see, I don't think we've got a good side picture of this particular car to, to view. Um, like I said, this is a, a basically one-off scheme, so uh, the pictures we get of this are going to be not very good. Um, the other thing, we can go on YouTube, but that's so dicey because on YouTube you don't get... I mean, the the pixels are the size of my thumbnail, you know, it's 360p or whatever. So, uh, we can see there, like, we can see the number. There's little details we can try and pull out of this. Um, but we'll basically assume that what they did on their other cars, they probably did on this car in terms of the way the contingencies are laid out and things like that. So, let's move on to the contingencies. That's our next step here. And again, this car's white, so there's not a whole lot of paint you can do. So, taking a quick look at that. Um, up front, let's just start with the fenders. This is like a, the very standard layout. Although that comp cams is a little cut off there, so we'll move that, but let's see what we get. Moog, Cleavite, Comp, Simpson, Edelbrock, JE, which I think is what we've got. Moog, Cleavite, Comp, Sisson, Edelbrock, J. Yep. So this is the layout. So we don't have to do anything here other than <coughs> move this. Now, uh, again, if you're new to painting, so these templates come with this wire. Um, and this wire shows you where the edge of things are. So if you're painting and you go all the way to the actual edge of this, this mask layer, which is actually this thing, so they, they kind of put this in there to make it easier to, to navigate, but that's not the edges. That's just a, that's just kind of helping you. And it's a, a, a gross guide, but this wireframe is your, your main guide. So with the wireframes white, well, when you're pinning on a white car, that's very useless. And what you can do is you can actually invert the color 
So if you go to colors, actually you gotta select it. So wire copy here. This is usually just called wire, but I I flipped it. Okay, because that's that's if you make duplicates, I just like to have duplicates so I don't have to flip it all the time, but but let's say you don't, and you just have the one, and you need to change the color because it's black and you're working on a black car, it's white and you're working on a white car or whatever. Easy thing to do, you go to colors, and you go to invert, and it flips it. So now you have a, a black. <clears throat> so it's the easiest way to do it. And what we can see here is, why is my comp cams cut off? Well, because it's hanging off the side here. So I'm going to go to my contingencies. This is the left front fender, and I'm going to select my comp cams, and you can see it selects it here. I'll just click on it, and then I can arrow key it on over. And because of that, I'm also going to need to move my 76 just a hair, and I'll move my wicks just a hair too. That should be pretty good. All right. And then I'll export with the mask off. Okay, now it's not hanging off. So pretty good. Okay, on this side, you know, these are very close to the edge as well. We could probably stand to move those in just a little bit. So let's go to the right front. And just to keep myself organized, I'll close that back down, open up right front fender contigs. <clears throat> and we will move our comp. Uh, okay, well, this is a good time to talk about this. So <laughs> your contingencies are out there. Um, they're not always out there. They're not always attached. So like when you download Tyler's template, you're going to get the 2002 contingencies. We're doing a 2003 car, so I couldn't use those. Um, you kind of, there, there's ways to get them. Um, and maybe I'll try and post up where they're at, or maybe I'll try and make something in a forum for it that, hey, here's contingencies for all the different years or something. But essentially, um, you, you, you want to try and get the right ones. Sometimes you got to make them. I had to make some because, like, for 2000, there'd be random ones that just weren't made. I couldn't find them anywhere. So that was, that was a bit of a, a pain to make them sometimes. So... I'll try and put them online for everybody. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that the Arca car, the nose of this thing is just super curved. It's really bent. That's why you see the headlight looks this weird shape. It's because in order to make it straight on the actual model, he had to bend it to, to fit these curves of the body of the car. And so it looks pretty warped here. Well, the same thing happens on your your contingencies on this side you know the right front fender is, is like the worst the left not bad but the right it, it's it's just kind of warped so now i know when when tyler made his he kind of warped the actual stickers and i don't to me what that does it, it sort of makes it weird because it just depends on the angle that you're looking at it is why it's warping it to me uh because it's like the stickers going over but you actually put like an angle into your sticker when you, you do that. So I just actually angled my stickers and still keep them basically straight edges. Um, and depending on where you put them. So like these ones are pretty straight here. <clears throat> you can see the Simpsons start to have a little bit of an angle to it. And then the comps got an angle. Well, that's the same over here. Because once you get above the center line, it starts kind of needing to, to be tilted. So I've got these different ones. It's angled in case I need it and uh, and whatnot. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move comp over here a little bit. And then let's go ahead and export that. There we go. Looks good. Clevite, let's give it a let's give it a pixel or two move as well. Okay. And that should be perfectly fine. Okay, great. All right, so that's looking good. All right, um, I'm going to save it again because I like to. And let's 
work on these door contingencies. Okay, so <clears throat> a couple things are going on right here. Um, on this part of the door, you see very common that they stick the sticker up on the A pillar and the way the iRacing template is broken up, the A pillar, the fender, and top of this, this really kind of more top of the fender, they're all split right here. So I had to actually split the sticker up, angle it out. It was a big pain to, <laughs> to get it to stick how I wanted it um, to, to line up. When you look at it on here, though, you can see now that it's all kind of one piece okay this is um on some cars they don't do it that way they actually had the sticker like down here and then everything else so that's the way the contingencies are set up but we're actually going to remove that so let's go to our left front door contigs uh, and here's our a pillar logo so if i click that off you can see um I keep them separate because sometimes you need it and sometimes you don't. <clears throat> but left front door contigs, and we will take that NASCAR race car out of there. And now we can actually move this whole layer group around. And what I'm going to want to do is bring it a little higher up. A little bit to the right. Like that. And let's export and see how that looks. All right, pretty good there. All right, um, let's see if we can see how this is laid out. So we've got, and you can see this is kind of on the A pillar. Like this is a kind of typically a common place for them to put that sticker. You know, like I said, I've seen it here. I've seen it where the Winston Cup is and everything's just pushed down a little bit, but common to be right there. All right, so let's get the Winston Cup, Bud, Mechanics, and McDonald's. Winston Cup, Bud, Mechanics. Okay, so we can see these two are backwards. Uh, and the other thing is I'm going to space all this out a little bit because it should be spaced further. Um, let me take actually a second to go ahead and do something here. <clears throat> so if you're trying to make something in a straight line and you're lining up multiple logos, there's this tool, and it's called, if you go to the image, you can go to Guides, and you can have a guide guide that you create. Uh, horizontal is obviously going to be this way. We want a vertical guide. Okay. And this guide, you, you use your grab tool, and you can move it wherever you want. But in this case, we're going to line it up right with our Winston Cup logo. Uh, if I hold control and mouse wheel, that's how I zoom in and out. Yeah, it's kind of a quick way to do things. So rather than grabbing this magnify tool and clicking in and out and all this, it's just easy to do this. And if you position it in different spots, it kind of, you know, works differently. But all right. So let's put one, two, three pixels between each one. Uh, we said we want mechanics next, I think. So one, two, three. Okay. And they didn't really have a lot of space between them here. But again, I've, as I said, you're kind of working with a slightly different body. So things don't always perfectly match up. So, you know, I always say when I'm looking at people's paint jobs of historical cars. It's basically their interpretation of it. You know, it's never going to be perfect. You're not, you're not going to be able to be exact because the car's not exact. So, you know, try and just do the best you can. Um, you know, when you start out, especially you're going to make your first couple paints, you know, or if you're first 10 or 20, even, and then you're going to go back and look at them and realize, Oh man, you know, I really wouldn't have done it this way. I, I would have done a better job or whatever. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's just part of the learning process. So some of it's just, like I said, this is kind of my experience. Like I don't want it to, to terminate the stickers halfway up. I'm going to have to space them out a little bit to get it to look closer to that. So, all right, so let's keep moving here. So we want McDonald's, Mobile, Autometer, and Jessel. 
So McDonald's, and we got to count out. One, two, three. If I wanted to, I could select it here and do it um, to make sure I'm more exact, because sometimes you'll mess up. OK, auto meters here. One, two, three. One, two, three from the bottom. <clears throat> I think we wanted mobile one, so I've got that hidden. There we go. Okay, and one, two, three, and then Jessel. And remember, you can hide things. So if your paint doesn't use one of these contingencies, it uh, doesn't use auto meter, rather than deleting it or anything, you can just hide it. Okay, click it off. You can't see it. But we need it. All right, Jessel right there. One, two, three. And is that it? Is that our bottom one? Yeah. Okay. All right. I usually try and just work top to bottom in rows the way I like to do it. But again, all this stuff is, you know, you'll create your own workflow. All right. So we can see our USG is there, and it looks fine. Um, I don't want to space them out too far horizontally because, like I mentioned earlier, these Xfinity cars, there's just like a little narrower here. So you need all the space you can get. Because if I turn on the wire, you'll see that there's a high probability we'll cut something off uh, right here. So I try and avoid it as much as I can. <clears throat> so USG, uh, then it's Outback, Holly, Goodyear. Which is how we have it. Looks good. The one thing is, I do want to space them out a little bit. Let's take a look at that Outback. Yeah, pretty centered between those two. Maybe down just a hair. Holly down. One, two, three. That's looking good. And then we're going to have infogrames right underneath our mobile. I feel like something's wrong. Um, let's see, USG. Holly should be, well, move that down a little more, maybe. Let's have a big gap there. Um, okay, Outback should be between Bud and Mechanics. Which it is. Holly should be between mechanics and McDonald's, which it is. <clears throat> and then Goodyear should be between those. I think it's just that Goodyear is pretty small. Oh, you know what? It's because I'm an idiot and <laughs> mobile is in the wrong spot. Mobile autometer. All right. Try that. All right, I was, I was definitely lost. Then infogrames, kind of underneath the mobile. All right, and an MBNA. And we'll bring Jessel down just a hair. Looks good. Okay. All right, and the last one is Raybestos Waste Management 3M. And are they dead in line? No, not really. It's kind of Raybestos really should be at the top of the USG. It's like kind of low here. Is it? Yeah. I have a feeling that's going to cause a small issue, which is not a big deal, but it's sort of just something you got to deal with when you paint. 
if you want to make it look right. All right, so waste management halfway to Outback, 3M halfway up. And then Mac Tools in red, which Mac Tools red. All right, so what you'll notice here is I can't find it. There it is. If I click on it here, it'll outline it. It's I can't select it, but I can click any. You don't have to click exactly on it. You can click anywhere, but you just got to be careful you don't move things. But if I just click, now I can arrow key it out. There we go. All right. Now, uh, again, this always gets really tight here, especially when it butts up a certain way. Let's see how that looks. So Mac is like just in line with that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, we want these like as close together as we possibly can get them. And uh, we get to cheat just a little bit here because we can put that black in line with it, which gives us just a little more room to work with. And then we'll notice that right here, the Goodyear's underneath that mobile. Well, we can just move it so that it's above it. So we'll take Goodyear and just flop it, and now it's above it, and it can sit right next to it, and that's just fine. Okay, so there's that. Let's turn on our wire and see what this looks like. Yeah, so we're going to get cut off a little bit. Even after all that work, so we're going to get just a little bit cut off. But we've got two options with that. We can either try and pull that up to make it fit <coughs> or just accept it. And I am going to absolutely close this down as much as possible. And then it's going to be what it's going to be. We're going to lose that little edge, which really wasn't uncommon for the real teams to do that. They they ran the stuff off the side all the time, so it's not a big deal from a from that standpoint. All right, uh, we've still got EA just kind of hanging out down there, and that should be right there next to MBNA. Yeah, you, you look at you can even see it here. Like the, the, they run it right off the edge. So EA, it's gonna be a, a tight squeeze. We'll make sure we're all the way so sometimes your your guide will fight you if you try and step out of line too much but we'll get away with that so that way we got EA let's go ahead and export it let's see what it would look like okay not terrible not terrible we might actually just squeeze that just a little more try and get that from as, as, as little cut off as we can have is, is better. Or we could, we can always do this. Just take us a little further over. We want it to be close, but if it's like a little past it or even to the inside there, wouldn't hurt it. <clears throat> we don't want it too out of whack. On this white car, it really won't matter much at all but there we go and we could actually squeeze that in just a little bit more okay they're all right on top of each other but that's okay there we go that looks pretty good all right so the other problem is this is cut off and if we look at it it's like well it looks like it's it's in. It's in. See, it's on the white. Well, when I click my wire on there, it's not in. And that's because the way, again, the, the wire is the end. The end of the white, the mask is not. So you have to use the wire as your guide. <clears throat> so what we have to do here is similar to what I had to do with this NASCAR sticker, which is all cut up. We have to make this fit. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to duplicate the layer of this Raybestos sticker. And then we're going to drag it down. Now, it's kind of trial and error, especially if you don't know where things are. I kind of roughly know this is like roughly here. Okay, and we're just looking for, see, we 
you just need this little section to match up. So let's just export that right there and see what that looks like. How close did I get it? Okay, so I'm a little too far uh, to... And so what you do is you use these... You use the wire here. You can see this pink line. You can Sometimes you can count these lines. So we're, we're right here. We need to be more in line with the next line over, which is this guy. So we're just going to head on over that way. Let's export again. Now we can also tell too this yellow is, is completely used, so we, we already even know we're a little off. We need to be like like that maybe. <clears throat> Let's see how that looks. Okay. Uh, so then the one problem that comes with your grid is it gets in the way when you're trying to get those really fine details. So then we have to turn it off. And then we can export again. And let's see if that's pretty good. Um, it's really hard to tell if we're, if we're up a little bit or not, but I can look at that. Let's, let's actually just bring it up one click and export and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's kind of better because it's like too tall. It should almost be flat along here. And if you look at it, it's just like raised up a little bit. So we're actually kind of off. So we need to down to one left and see what that does for us. Um, if it's a different color, so we, one thing I could do that's a little bit of a trick here, because usually this sticker's got like a white, white border to it. So what we'll do is we'll just make this thing black, this whole car black real quick. Or gray, I guess. <laughs> it's very gray looking. Um, export. And we can see that the edge here is is off, so we want to actually bring it. And and actually, we're too low to see that. So what we're going to do is go back to our sticker, rate best as three, and we're going to go up one over two export. Might bring it up one more. This is where it gets a little tricky sometimes. Yeah, you see it. It'll have that little bit of an overlap there. I'm not sure we can actually get rid of it. Let's try. Up one. Left one. Let's see. Oops. Hate when I do that. So no matter what you do, because it just doesn't line up perfectly. It's always going to have some sort of lip. So what's the least offensive lip is the question, which I tend to go by, well, how does this look? And that's not bad. So um, is what it is. Nothing we can do. <clears throat> well, there is something we could do, maybe. But if I angle it, like a degree or two. Uh, let's try it. Let's try it. <coughs> All right, so we're going to go here, and we're going to go to Layer and Transform. And it's got a thing called Arbitrary Rotation. And you can set that angle. So if I angle it one degree, you can see it moved a little bit. Rotate export and it kind of angles that okay so it's got the top matching a little bit let's go ahead and move it to the right one I don't really remember it being too far off like this but yeah so now that top's pretty good but the sides again there's just no there's no real good way to to do it, but 
that's it. That's pretty good. Again, if somebody's getting that close on it. But fortunately with this car, we don't have to worry about it because the car's white. <laughs> so, I will say, I don't, why is it not black? It should be black. Well, let's see what my bucket fill did here. There we go. Uh, they had fill similar colors, and I think it diluted it for some reason. All right, so we're going to make it white. All right, and export. And we're back to looking good. Okay, so that side of it is done. Now we got to do the other side. Some cars, you'll notice, it's different. It'll be different on this side than that side. But again, with this car, we get to take some creative liberty with that because we can't see it. There's no way for us to know. <clears throat> so we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and just set it up the same way. So I will say on this side of the car too, for whatever reason, you always seem to have more room. I don't know why. It's like the the shape of the car, just where everything is. So. Uh, let's close down the left front door. We're going to open the right front door. Let's get rid of the NASCAR race car. And we're going to take the whole thing and we're just going to kind of move everything a little bit. And bring it on up. Okay. And same thing we had. We're going to go two spaces on everything, or three spaces on everything. So Winston, Bud, Mechanics, McDonald's. One, two, three. One, two. No, oh, mechanics McDonald's. Let's try that. One, two, three. Uh, and then it was mobile, I think. spitballing here for a second. Okay. I think that ended up being a little lower last time, but we'll find out. Alright. So... Yeah, and this one wanted to be up a little bit. Okay. MBNA was at the bottom somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, kind of reverse of that, actually. Okay, so then... A little lower on this, a little lower on that. Be right in line with it. But we had it forward a little bit on it uh, because we wanted it to be like that. Okay, and then we want to raise that Goodyear over the mobile. Like that. And it's about halfway and it max right next to it. <clears throat> and we want red Mac, which again is right there. So this way actually we can spread this side out a little bit because we're having a little more room to work with. Okay, waste management. Be up a little bit. 3M. Kind of like that. Okay, and then here we're going to want to squeeze all this together again.
yeah just like that all right so let's go ahead and export <clears throat> and again looks good okay excellent and question is are they spread out enough does it look yeah so see here it ends right about I didn't really realize I messed that up. I've got it like directly in line. It should be the EA should be a little bit lower. <clears throat> so on this one, it should be kind of like that, and on this side, same thing. It should be kind of like like that. So let's look at that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Now we need to fill out a bunch of small things. Um, this car does have some contingencies on it that go on the back. And it also has the big BAM racing on the hood. <clears throat> now I went ahead and downloaded this earlier. Um, but you can Google things. So I could say BAM racing logo. And, and this is what we get. And unfortunately, it's pretty small. So we're gonna have to blow it up, which you hate to do, but we're just not gonna have a lot of choice in that. So let's do this. I actually wanna take another look at it. <clears throat> And kind of see how they they did things here, but it's not exactly what I what I want. I want the yeah. Here we go. That's a very small, not great picture either. Same with that. Uh, that's a pretty small picture, but. if I can find it somewhere. It's like it's hiding. I don't... Or I just like completely glossed it. There it is. Ah! Alright. So we can zoom. So really it's just got the black outline. Um, and then the yellow. Uh, the one difference is with this from the previous year is they... <laughs> See, the, the racing font that they used there was just like a standard plain Jane. And then the, the one that we've got with our our logo is, is different. But I actually did go into the, the YouTube of the 2003, and this is the one they use. They actually did use this, this kind of crazy looking font. So that's what we're going with. Um, I wish I could find it up close. We've just got... The only one we've got is that uh, that one image of it, and if you look really closely, you can kind of see it's got that that different style font on it. So black outline everywhere uh, until you get to the racing part, in which case it's got a little bit of yellow around all the the racing letters, and then it's black on the inside. So. We're gonna have to try and recreate that. So let's go ahead and uh, so I've been doing tons of painting, so I've been saving all these logos. So I went ahead and got one. And we're gonna open this with our GIMP program. I borrowed something off that earlier. <clears throat> Alright, so we can see it's pretty jagged. It's pretty, pretty rough, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna be able to work with it. So we've got our yellow that we were using earlier, but we changed it. So I want to go back and I want to get it off of our numbers because it should be the same. So we'll grab it off 49 L, and we'll take our eyedropper tool. And we've got it. Okay, 
so it's a little different now okay and then let's go in here and we are going to use our fill tool mm, let's use our fill tool let's see what it looks like wrong <laughs> that's what that looks like fill similar colors that's what we want all right now it's got a all right so sometimes I've run into this and these have like an alpha channel or something on them um, it just makes it sometimes somewhat difficult to work with so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it in all right we're gonna paste it in here but first I need to make a new layer group because we've got our numbers layer and well, let's just close all this down to keep us organized so we've got a, a numbers layer and we've got our car body I'm gonna actually right click on our car body new layer group and I'm gonna call this decals <clears throat> and that is where we will be putting this and actually what we can do is with this main car body we'll make a new layer group and we're going to call this scheme uh, and even though this is a single color so you don't really have to do that for this the reason I'm doing it is because we'll probably make more of these Ken Schrader cars and they actually do have a scheme on them for the later BAM cars and so we'll end up reusing this so might as well get it set up now alright so for decals um, Let's actually select the main car body. We're just going to paste into this. There you go. Call it BAM Racing. Okay, let's move it into decals. All right, and let's move it to the hood. All right. So as we can see, this is this is pretty small. You know, we'd, we'd like a bigger version of this, but we don't get one. So... Let's try our fill tool first. Okay. Yeah, looks pretty worked pretty well. Now we've got these little this little white area in here. And I don't know if that's on that car or not. But what we can do again with cars like this where there's just not a lot of information, we have to to deduce what they did and we're going to deduce that they did it the same way as they did this BAM okay uh, so let's see if we can find it that's that's not horrible but it's kind of far away let's see if we can find another picture of that not here all right uh, so we'll look here uh, all right well there's one that's not horrible Okay, so what we can see is there's no white. It's just completely, it's got, it's got black, and then it's got color. There's no separations or anything like that between it. <clears throat> so, and then this uh, is, is interesting. So, we're going to have to figure out how we want to make that. But I've got an idea for it, so. All right. So let's go ahead and undo our fill bucket because we're going to actually, so, so when we click it, there's a default setting here. Our opacity is down. That's not what we want. We want that to be at 100. Maybe that's why it was gray before. All right, so our threshold here is at 79. So the lower we make this, the more in line with this pixel color it has to be. So before it's kind of getting some of this white, well, we could take this down to, um, you know, 25, and then it's it's getting less, right? Or we can go the other way, and we can make it 100, and it gets the whole thing, right? Now, it does do that, but it's, again, the problem with this bucket fill tool is look what it's done it's it's made it um, very very ugly right there so let's undo that um, let's make it uh, 90 
Okay. And then I can actually just click it twice. That's a little better. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take that. It's got this. I can't tell if that's a thing. It's really not. We'll fix it. <clears throat> so we'll have to fix that. That's okay. Um, okay. So there's our yellow. And then for this here. So let me think about how I want to do this. And I think the way we're going to do this is we're going to actually separate this off of this whole thing. <clears throat> so let's use the first use of our paths tool. This is probably the most powerful, useful tool uh, that you'll do use in GIMP. It's just, uh, you know, I don't really even use hardly the brushes very much anymore um, because this is almost always what you kind of want to use. Uh, it's a really good tool. So we're going to run that here and see there's a curvature to this. So if we grab our line, we can curve things out. Okay. But these give us a little bit of fine control over that as well. So we want to try and match that curvature as much as possible. Okay. Now, if I click again, now that I've done that, you see it makes a new thing. Well, I don't want that yet. I want it, sometimes you want to do that, sometimes you're going to need that, but I want this to be one consecutive piece. So if I shift click this, it turns it white. That allows me to move these independently because if I have them if I have it like this and I move this, the whole thing moves, okay? But I don't want that. I want to move individual. So I could shift click and then I could move just this side, you know, or I could move just this side and it would be fine. But since I've left this one open and this one closed, my next click is going to connect, okay? So I connect that and I'm going to come over here and we're going to go to the outside of this. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm doing all these clicks, I'm going to connect all this and I'm going to use it as a selection tool. All right. And then here, same thing. This has a bit of a curvature to it. Just a bit. Not much. So I want to make sure. All right. So now I, I notice I, I dropped this. I want to actually move this. So I'm going to shift click it and I can drag it up there a little bit. And the way it works is anything that's open it will connect when you move it. So if I open this one, I'm going to close this one. If I open this one and I open, uh, shoot, uh, I just moved myself way away. All right, just in case I gave you any way walleye vision. All right, so I opened this one over here. If I open this one, they're both going to move. But again, I don't want that. So I'm going to close that. All right, and I want to make sure that this is kind of in line with how I want it to be. Okay, which... And, and the more you pull these in and out, the, it moves where the curve is. If you overlap them, it'll start to make kind of an, an S-curve, you know, like that. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. But we are, again, trying just to do this. All right, so there's that. And then I'm going to take one over here. And none of this matters at this point. This part of it doesn't matter. Um, and we'll go right there. Selection from path. Okay, so it connected everything. And now I'm going to cut it. Control X. Paste it. Control V. And it, what it does when you do that in GIMP is it creates a floating section on pasted layer. Now, if I just clicked right back on, it's going to drop it right back onto my current layer. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep this a separate layer. So I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to call it BAM Racing 2. Okay. Um, these paths get saved. So if I go here, these are some old ones. But this is the last one I just made. 
Because when you click off your path tool, it goes away. And people get frustrated because, oh man, I, you know, I gotta redo this. No, you don't. You're gonna go to your paths. If you double click your path, it pulls it back up, okay? So whenever you click off of paths, it always deletes, well, doesn't, it makes it disappear. But it's saved here. If you keep reusing your same thing, you'll end up with like millions of these. So it's not a bad idea to delete the ones from old projects. Uh, you should always probably start new projects, but you know, if you copied something like I did in this case, um, I only want the ones that are, you know, and you could name this if you wanted to, but this isn't, this isn't going to be a persistent thing because it's just for a logo. Okay. So, so we've got this separated now and <laughs> this is kind of a neat thing. So we can look at this and let's look at, uh, the way that BAM racing looks. So you can see it's just got a little bit of an outline, in this case orange, but we're going to have yellow, but just a little bit of an outline to it. Okay. Well, what we can do is we can, we can do two things here. Um, we're actually going to make two layers on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to if we alt, hold Alt and we click our layer, it selects everything in the layer. Now there's a problem here. That original logo, if we look at it, has this white in it. Uh, and if I take my wand tool, I can select and delete that out, although it was going to leave this anyway because of the way this thing is set up. Um, we want to get rid of that though. So we need to get rid of it. So let's, let's use our select tool. Now, I want to select a lot. I don't want to miss much here. So let's go with 90. I would like to preserve some of this if possible. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it does. Okay. It did preserve some of it, although not all of it. So actually we'll undo... Uh, let's, let's just back it down. Let's make it... Uh, <clears throat> Let's try that. Because I want to preserve as much of that as I can. Let's try 50. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. So it's preserving all our color for the most part. All right. Um, you'll also notice that anywhere it can't get to did not select. So we have to hold shift and click inside of all of our uh, spots it, it, it didn't reach. Okay, so you notice that a lot inside of letters. Okay, so now I can just delete. Okay. So all the white's gone. Now when I alt-click my BAM racing, it just selects what is actually... It selects your content, basically. Okay. And I need that because... Now we're going to do this. This is a neat trick. This is great. If you need to make a outline of something... Or if you need to make, um, uh, like, usually, usually for an outside. But in this case, we need to make it kind of an inlay, okay? So what we're going to do, I want to take a look at one thing on that picture first. Wrong picture. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of thicker there. Cause see, actually, it's, it was not really accounted for. All right, so we're going to do two things first. So even on a very boring car like this car, <laughs> there's still always things you have to do, and this is one of them. We have to make this logo, and we have to make it look right. So where this racing is here, if we, we, we kind of need to make that extended a little bit. Because if we look at it again... That, that kind of encroaches into the black here. And with the way we've cut it off, and the G is the same, the way we've cut it off, it's not going to look like that. <clears throat> so, this is going to end up being black anyway. So, I'm actually just going to use our paths tool. And I'm going to make it black. All right. And we get to. 
we get to kind of think about this a little bit here. Let's do it this way. We're going to make a new layer. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? Change your plan. We're going to make it We're going to make it that blue. So let's just go with that. All right. And we're going to use our paths tool. And we're going to start right here. Now, the thing with paths is it's, it's hard to make a straight line. Okay. With the paintbrush, you can hold shift and kind of see it. It's hard to do that with paths. So before we do this, let's grab. We're going to make a new guide. So we need to go to Image, Guides, New Guide, and we're going to make a horizontal guide. And we want to grab that with our grab tool, pull that down. We're also going to have our vertical guide. So when you use paths, sometimes these guides are really helpful. So our vertical guide, we're going to want to set up right about there. Our horizontal guide, we're going to set right there. Okay. And then we're going to take our paths tool. And how far does it go? Again, this is you just got to keep checking your your reference picture. So it goes a little past the vertical on the R and then it's a, a like a 45 degree slant. So a little past the vertical, and then a slant. Alright, and we're actually going to bring it off the guide just a hair. We can make sure it's straight line still. We're going to stroke the path with this, <clears throat> and we're going to make it yeah, one one pixel. Let's see what that does. All right, made a very light line. <laughs> Not exactly what we're looking for here. So we're going to um, we're going to use a little darker line tool, and actually we'll we'll use. Let's use our eyedropper and let's get that color dark. Okay. Back to our paths. We'll get it saved. So we'll click it. One other thing, I'm going to go ahead and start this a little, oops, a little further back here. Okay. Uh, you'll notice I didn't actually use the guide. I set it here. Um, I might have been able to center it more, but uh, it's just reference though. So sometimes you just need it for reference. Okay, so stroke path. There we go. That should be fine. Okay. So now our, our R is set. Um, and I can even fill this in, which I might do, just to make it consistent. So let's use our eyedropper. And then fill. Uh, this might be hard to tell from, from there, so what I'll show you is if I take off that original BAM racing, this is what you're left with. But I want to fill that. But I don't want it to fill like that. So we want to reduce that threshold by a lot. Okay. And we don't want that. So when you end up with a situation like this, um, sometimes you're better off because see when I when it made this 
this cut here. It really didn't do exactly what I wanted. So let's take this uh, this paintbrush tool and we're going to make it fill in like that. Undo that. Wrong. Wrong color. Try that again. Like that. Okay. And then we can switch colors back and then we can just take this. Now, there's two tools there. There's a paintbrush and the, the difference of the paintbrush is it'll put the, that those lighter colors around. So if you're making a line with a paintbrush, you almost always want to use the brush. The pencil does not do that. So if you use the, the pencil, it's, it's always going to be very harsh. Um, but the pencil is great for this kind of work where you're trying to fill in, you know, specific dots or stuff like that. So we can do that pencil work. Okay. Uh, and then we'll notice here, like we've got this, this, uh, this situation up here. Well, what we can do is we can, we can actually just kind of fill that in. So if I select that and I copy and I just paste, it pastes it over and I can actually make it keep copy pasting all the way across there. So I'll make it the same height as those. And then I can take the selection tool <coughs> and anything I don't want. So if you grab the side of it, it moves it like this. Okay. But if you grab the corner, it moves both. But just delete that. Hit delete. Deletes it. Because um, I don't want that that artifact there. Okay. This side actually looks okay. Um, well, not, not really, though. It's too cut off. So we're going to want to do the same thing that we did on the R with the G. So let's go ahead and grab this, move it over. Okay. All right. Yeah, it kind of holds you that pixel. Okay. So let's again take that dark color and we're going to do paths again. So paths tool, let's select here, and we're going to go to here up, yep, and then we're going to go down to here about 45 degrees. Stroke path, okay, and not exactly sure why I did that, but that doesn't matter because we're going to take our pencil tool and just fill that in. And then let's use our paintbrush. And we're going to go here, down to there. And then let's fill this. Let's again use that pencil. So right clicking on these tools. They used to have different tools, but they've really consolidated this. Now you right click them for different things like your gradients and stuff. Which um, took a little getting used to, but I actually like it. Um, just a little, cleans up the space a little bit. A little more efficient. Because otherwise, you, a lot of times you're hunting for tools all the time. Well, now you you have less places to go. So even though it seems like they're not quite at, at your fingertips as much, they're, they still really are. So Okay, so just like the other side, we're, gonna, we're just going to copy that. And we're going to paste when you paste it, you can move the layer, and then as you keep pasting another layer, it locks it down to your, so that floating section, once you click off, it just locks it back down. So that's how you, you add to a layer without doing anything crazy there. Okay. All right, so that's been, that's been a lot of minutia for, for this, but, you know, this is when you when you have to make your own logo. This is just what you have to do. It's 
it's just part of it. Now you can see this. Uh, this is a little different looking. Excuse me, <clears throat> a little different looking. Well, you know, it doesn't matter because it's all going to be black. <laughs> so we get to be kind of sloppy with that. If we had to match it in or something, it'd be more of a pain. We could do it, but it'd just be more of a pain. But we don't even have to worry about it because what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. So if I right click a layer, it gives you all these options and I can make new layer and then I can name this whatever. So we're going to call this uh, racing yellow. And there's nothing on this. It's a blank layer, but it's not going to be for long. So we want to make sure we've got our yellow that we've been using, which is this one here. If I wasn't sure, I could pull it from there. And we're going to select our new BAM racing thing. Um, I noticed something. We've, we've got a, a problem. We've got this white here that we didn't get rid of. So let's get our, we're going to use a eraser tool. And we're going to use, use that. Actually, we could actually select this. Delete. <clears throat> we're on the wrong thing though. <laughs> we're on racing yellow, so we did nothing. So let's try that again. Uh, we'll just go right up to it like that. And then we could magic wand here. Delete. Pressing delete on the keyboard to delete. All right, now let's select it. Okay, now it's selecting how we want. Okay, great. All right, and we want it to be perfectly selected because the thing we're gonna do here I'm going to click on this racing yellow. Now I've still got the selection, but I'm on my correct layer. And I am going to go to select and I'm going to, go to shrink. And this shrinks your selection by however many pixels. Let's shrink it by three pixels. Okay. I think that's going to be good. And then we're going to fill this with our yellow. All right, how about that? Okay, looks pretty good. So we've got a nice inlay, and it's on a separate layer. Just in case I didn't like it or I had to do something down the road, I can actually delete that layer or make it go away. And I haven't screwed up my original thing. Not yet, at least. All right, so this little spot here is kind of messed up, we decided. So um, let's fix it. Uh, let's use, well, let's just use the eyedropper because I can't remember. Okay, and we'll use our pencil. So we're just going to just make it look like it did over there, basically. Dropper. Okay. And then the dark blue. Fine. Dark blue. Pencil. There we go. Okay. All right. So that that's fixed. That looks good. Um. Okay. And this part is. Uh, well, it's slightly more difficult because this isn't separated. So let's save it, all our work. Uh, let's try a couple things here. So let's try the magic wand. And we can select our yellow. And we're going to cut it out of there. And we're going to paste it. We're going to call it... Uh, Bam 2... And obviously this is really unorganized at the moment, but it's not going to matter. Now I want to alt-click my BAM racing. And again, we see we've got a bit of a problem. And that's that we've got all this white that it's trying to, to have as part of this. We don't want that. So we're going to go back here and we're going to see if we can't uh, select that white. 
Uh, oh, we're on the wrong thing. Fam Racing, there we go. And let's delete that. Okay. So I'll click it again. Okay, cool. And it's black on the thing, so that makes it kind of easy. We can actually just go and colorize like we did earlier. We're going to go to colorize. Let's just make it black. Now there's a problem with it. Didn't work how we thought. <laughs> so let's see something here. It's actually in, inverted our selection. So let's try this again. Let's alt click that. Okay, it's got the right thing selected now. Uh, but see, it's still got a white in areas where we don't want it. Okay, so we got to get rid of all of that. So let's try this again. Okay, hit delete on both those. Let's try it again. Nope. All right. Um, so there's a couple ways we can deal with this. Uh, so if we invert it, we can kind of see what's going on there. This is all black. All right. I want to get rid of it. Uh, it just does not want to let me delete that, does it? Okay, well, we could select it that way, but we also want to select inside here. We want to select everything inside this center area. Let's up that threshold. Everything inside should be selected. Okay. Oh. Okay, and then we're going to colorize this. And we're going to make it black. And then if we turn on our BAM, we've got a yellow and black BAM logo. How about that? Now, there's some things I don't like about it, but we'll work on those shortly. Okay, so now we have this same thing, this, this part. So let's go ahead and I'll click that. And let's colorize it. And we're going to make it black. Okay. So that looks pretty good. And that's why it didn't matter, because we're making it black, right? Now this part didn't get filled in. That happens sometimes, but we can just make it black, because it doesn't matter. Because we're going to make this all one piece again. All right. Um, and on these edges, we can. there's things we can do here, see? So... Now let's turn on our yellow. There we go. We've got a nice looking thing. Um, before we do anything, we're gonna we're gonna make duplicates of all this stuff. And if you right click and you duplicate, that's how you that's how you make a duplicate. So. Um, Okay, and I'm going to take a small break here. I'll be right back.
Okay, and we're back. These guys blowing me up here. All right, um, let's see where I was. So we're going to be using this logo. Let's take a look at it again. Okay, and it's make sure that has that gap there like I want. It's a little funky looking there. Like it should be that should be filled in black a little bit. It's like a little small almost. So what we can do to fix that is let's select that that black again. <clears throat> oh, we've already made the copy. All right, well, that's what we get for jumping the gun. Okay. So what we want to do is select the black layer there. So this time we're kind of doing the reverse. We're going to select, but we're going to grow it. So let's grow it by three. Okay. We got to be a little careful with how we do this. Because I don't know that we want it hugely. Uh, let's undo that. Actually, let's undo that. We're going to select, we're going to grow this by two. And okay. We're going to make another new layer. We're going to call this BAM. We're going to call this Racing 3. Again, this is getting a little messy because of the way we're we're doing it, but let's just try and fill this with black. And, and the way I'm going to do that is actually just going to take the pencil tool, and I'm just going to make it big and just run across there. Okay. And it does sure no. There's a lot of little artifacts in it that way. Okay, so. That does make it a little thicker looking, which I think is a little better. Although, again, I'll take one more look. I think we need to... Yeah, you know what I think it is? All right. <laughs> We're going to undo what we just did. Uh, and actually... We're going to shrink the selection by one. We're going to make that black. Let's take another. You know. You, oh, I. You know what it is. I know what it is. I know why this is not looking right. It's because we've we've made the wrong <laughs> the wrong colors for what we were doing. That's why it looks the way it does. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make this yellow. And then we want to make our yellow black. But then we need to grow it and make that black. So Okay. So that's our original black right there. Okay? And this is our original yellow. So we're going to colorize this to be black. We're going to colorize this to be our yellow, which then has to be lightened up a lot, otherwise it won't show. Okay, 
then we're gonna make that. But there shouldn't be a connection. Well, there is kind of a connection there, actually. Uh, let's delete that. Nope, wrong. Delete this. That that looks weird. All right, so we're gonna take van our this right here, and we want to grow this. So we're gonna select and then grow, and then we're gonna paint it black. That looks right. That's what we wanted. But there's only one problem. <laughs> uh, we're paying for uh, something we just did a little bit ago, which is this. this here we filled this in we shouldn't have well we didn't know so we're going to use our eraser tool okay um, pretty good now through all this we've still got some some kind of ugly stuff going on here um, so we're gonna we're just gonna have to go in and we're gonna have to kind of clean up a little bit of this by hand because it's just the way it it did things uh, which is not unexpected when you've got something like this. All right, so that, hmm, I think some of this we just got to get rid of. So a lot of little cleanup stuff like that. Normally you kind of want some of that, but it's not the right color and it doesn't look right. And it stands out and looks weird, so we're just going to get rid of it. Um, just one more close look at that. It looks like that is completely filled in black in those middles. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, like that. Okay. All right, so we're going to save our progress again. So we're going to experiment a little bit with this. So we're kind of saving everything just in case it doesn't work out because we don't have to want to like redo all of this in case things go sideways. So we're going to duplicate that whole layer group. Uh, it's kind of the way to do it. I was doing it kind of the long way before. Alright, but then we're going to merge it. Alright, let's crop it to content. So one of the things you can do is kind of a uh, thing, and you kind of, a lot of times you want to avoid it because you're going to add fuzz to your 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 uh, logo when you shrink things down from big but in our case we've just got so much sharp edges that we almost want to add a little bit of alias to it so we're going to scale it up we're going to make it 1500 and then we're going to scale it back down to 500 
and you'll notice it kind of aliases it for us, which sometimes <laughs> it's a double-edged sword, but sometimes you want a little bit of aliasing because you end up with this situation. It's going to look super jaggy. All right. Yeah, let's explore. Let's see what we got. How did that come out, all things considered? Definitely some rough edges still. Um, but we've got another thing we can try to. So, not bad. Kind of close to what we want. So, let's try and use these filters. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Sometimes you want to make sure you've got room around your edges. So we're going to go ahead and go to um, crop or uh, layer to image size, and that makes your layer the size of whatever you're working on. All right, let's use a filter, and we're going to use a Gaussian blur, and we're going to make it just blur it a little bit. You got to really play with this because you can go too far and make it super blurry which you don't want let's see how that looks definitely kind of blurry don't like that too much so too far so we're gonna try it again let's uh let's just do it by 0.5 that's a lot of times what I find is 0.5 just takes a little bit of the edge out of it. Helps with some of that aliasing. When you have a situation like this. That's really not too bad, all things considered. We could definitely clean it up more. Uh, so the way, the way we could do it here is we could we could actually you use the paths tool and run all along all of our edges with the paths tool uh, which might be worth it might be worth it but we're not going to do it on this one we're going to if we do that we're going to duplicate this again <laughs> and we're going to try it on a different one so let's let's get rid of that other one we were working on it's kind of worth a shot kind of thing but let's see if we can make this look better. All right, so. Uh, oh, there we go. Like, why is that not working? Well, that's why. Okay, so let's start with just the black here. All right, and we're gonna take our path tool. Let's start right here at the top. We're going to try and follow the lines here. Oops. Uh, that happens sometimes when you start moving these things. Okay. So now I'm going to try and match that curve all along. And the thing is, we're trying not to to change the the shape of this too much. Is the thing that's where it kind of gets tricky sometimes because you start to to kind of you're trying to stay right on it, so you don't. But you know, you, you don't want to change the shape drastically. Okay. Keep turning off that back layer so that things are. Okay. <laughs> the 
this is going to be a fun part to do. Get that curve made. Okay, like that. All right, so we've got a whole thing in place. Let's go to stroke path here. Okay. So now we've made it a very smooth kind of surface, edge, whatever. Um, okay. Undo it. I think I just did it on the wrong thing, though. <laughs> so if you do it on the wrong layer, that's a problem. But that's okay because our path is saved. Do it again. No big deal. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, let's export it. Shoot. Definitely smoother. Definitely better. Okay. But now this yellow is still really ugly. But instead of going through all that minutia again of that. Let's turn off our yellow. Uh, run a new layer. We're going to call this B yellow 2. Okay, we're going to select our BAM racing that we just made. I don't know why that is a thing. Okay, let's try something different here. Oh, I see. Okay, let's just try and select. Oh, it's on the yellow. That's why. Okay. Uh... You know what we can do with this? So, because it's all filled in anyway, let's just use our fill tool. Make it black. All right, and we have to get all these little speckles out of here. Trying to delete all of that. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, let's keep selecting more stuff. Okay. All right. This is just kind of the thing about painting. Sometimes it's a little bit of just minutia <laughs> and there's no way around it all right so let's try and select that okay and then we can use our shrink from selection again and let's shrink it by I don't know five hmm well where's our normal yellow bin and eh, maybe a little more so we're gonna shrink it by 10. That's really close. It's really close. The only problem is it's not going to catch that B. Hmm. Well, it's not. So I think the easier thing to do, I'm afraid. Let's go ahead and layer to image. Is we're going to just do the same thing we just did with our paths tool and just remake this so that it's not aliased. 
so badly. All right. So uh, one thing this does go to show is that even easy paints, <laughs> you know, you look at a paint, you're like, oh, that's super easy. That just took no time at all. Can sometimes have really, really annoying things like this that take a long time because there wasn't a logo. Uh, some of the paints that you just think shouldn't take any time at all, you know, I mean, making a, a hard scheme uh, really isn't that hard <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's, you know, because the lines are the lines, but doing something like this can be, can be really time consuming. Um, so never know how long something's going to take until you really get into it. Uh, you know, and obviously it depends too on how much, how much time you want to spend. You know, I could have said, ah, the logo wasn't very good, but we're going to call it a day because I didn't care about the car. And while this isn't some car with any real emotional attachment to me, I want it to be right. So we're going to have to spend a little more time. That's okay. So let's do that. Okay. And then... So I said before, sometimes you might want to separate. Well, this is one of those. So we're going to cut that off. And now we're going to have a new start point for this one. But it's still on the same path. So when I do the stroke path thing, uh, it'll all be the same. Actually, we're going to have a start point for here. Let's see if we can, I don't think we can make that turn. that that's roughly what that'll look like that's fine okay let's keep on rolling here I'm gonna make another one now obviously I'm not trying to overplay the difficulty of it this is not technically difficult to do. It's just a little bit of minutia, time-consuming stuff, you know, not hard. Just, just takes a little time. Okay, so we're going to now move on to right here. Okay, like that. Go to there and there. So always make sure you straighten out these lines with your paths because if you have it curl around, it'll do some weird stuff when you go to do that path. <laughs> when you stroke that path, it, it kind of messes with it, so you don't want that. Okay, and down here. Okay, and we'll cut that off. We may end up going back and adjusting this, of course, we don't know. We'll find out. Okay, shut that off. One more letter to go. Start at the 
that up. Now you can put all your pieces in place and then go back and adjust them. We'll try and do that here once. The only reason I don't sometimes do that is because if you start moving one thing, you, I don't know, I feel like sometimes you start chasing it. And I try not to redo. I don't want to be redoing it too much if you can avoid it. Only if you can't. All right. Now we want to curve this one down here a little bit. And that one. Just like that. And okay. Now what we're doing is we're not doing it on the we don't want to do it on our yellow layer. We want to do it on this blank one. Oops. Undo that. Filled it with this. So I can do this fill path too. I haven't done that yet. Usually I just put on this stroke, but if I do fill, it should fill it all in. But it did not. So we are going to stroke path instead. Okay, or if you don't have the layer on, nothing happens. So <laughs> let's try that again. All right, undo. Okay, fill path, go. All right, let's take a look at that. All right, now I'm going to say that looks a lot better than what we had before. You can see before, see now, much nice and clean, very good looking. So, now the other thing is, we'll find out if I made a big mistake here, because I have to blow this up. <laughs> so, if I blow it up and it doesn't look good, because it's, it's fuzzy, then you could make the case that maybe I should have done this when it was already large uh, but we're gonna find out we'll find out hopefully not although knowing thinking about that a little more I probably won't do this racing part yet until we've blown it up a little bit okay so uh, let's we're gonna crop this to content we're going to Rotate it counterclockwise. How big should this be on the car? So I know we've got that picture of it. Um, we need to go back to our 2003 Subway 400. And what page was he on? Five? Four? No, there is. Yeah, four. Okay. So how big is this? And I would say this is the entire length of the hood with hood to hood, uh, fender to fender, really. So let's see uh, when I blow this up. Let's go ahead and turn on our, our wire because there's no way to know otherwise. Okay. You know, one way I could measure this is if I say bottom of this part to here. How long is that? 570. All right. So let's just use that. Let's scale the layer to height of 570. Okay. And pull it down. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to scale it to 5, 
60 though because I thought it was just like a little bit hard to fit there and I think I want it a little further down on the hood. Let's see how it looks. You see it's got it pretty close to the headlights with the M's so we want it pretty far down. Okay, let's turn off our wire. Let's export. And... Oh yeah. Yeah, much better. Much better. I still think our racing <laughs> looks a little jacked up. It's a little too... Something's not right with it. I think. I just can't tell if it's too much or yellow maybe like maybe the the black needs to to fill in a little bit not sure um and obviously a lot of jagginess now if that's the case if we think it's got needs some more black that's easy to fix because we can use our paths tool and we'll just run it over and that'll clear up our jaggy and make it a little narrower at the same time so let's go after that. I think that's what we're going to want to do. Uh, can't see. Just want to make sure before we commit to that. Yeah, I really think it's just too thick. It needs to be thinner like this. So a little too thick with that yeah, yellow right now. Okay. can delete that. Get rid of that. That's our yellow. That's our black. Okay. We'll use our black layer. Okay. So a lot of a lot of path to do here. Uh, it's gonna get pretty pretty intense I guess, but it is what it is. Probably gonna. It's definitely really angular. So I'm not sure there's a lot of like curving though. And if there's not a lot of curving needed, then it really won't be so bad. I'm more concerned with can I keep it consistent in terms of how thick. we make this yellow layer or black or whatever however you want to describe that like that's not right this is why when we actually do the when we actually stroke this next thing like you really should just always be using your layers because your layers are such an advantage. If you if you mess something up and you're on a different layer, then no big deal. Just delete it or you know start over. And, and you haven't done anything to your original thing you were working with. So. And, I, and I'll show you too, like if you make it too, um, you know, you feel like you didn't make it thick enough, there's like, there's only so many things you can do to correct it that it doesn't matter. Okay, let's shut that off. And we'll go. That's got a little bit of a curvature to it, I think. Or maybe it doesn't and it shouldn't. Hmm. Uh. 
do it like that. Okay, more to do here yet. Okay. Not a whole lot to say when you're doing this. This is just basic stuff. Uh, that was annoying. <laughs> Sometimes your guides thwart you. When you're not using your guides, it's a good idea to get them out of your way because you'll just keep running into them. pretty angular so it's not really and that's why you turn it off because it'll try and connect there we go it's kind of just angular stuff so it should be pretty simple Let's keep that. Okay, and there we go. Turn that off, and then we've got Okay, here we go, let's try it. We can actually export it with all that stuff still on there. Definitely cleans it up, but that wasn't actually correct. <laughs> I just, that's the wrong thing again. All right, let's make a new layer. I forgot. Um, be racing to and survey says better for sure. Definitely better. I think we could make it even maybe one more pixel. Let's try it. If we don't like it, we can always put it back. Export. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Something weird going on here. And here. So let's see if we can't clean some of this up. Hmm. Why did it do that, I wonder? So sometimes... Sometimes with paths... <laughs> just get a little bit... Yeah. So it'll do that. It's, it's facing it the wrong way. And it'll mess up your stuff. Which is not good. Because like this one too. It's facing the wrong way. Yeah. yeah, I've seen it. I don't know why that happens. It just happens. You gotta make sure you, you've got it corrected or it'll look weird. Okay, and then also I think we've got maybe a little bit of a curvature or something going on here. Let's try and move that again.
Hmm. There we go. That's a little better. But it's That's cleaned it up a bit. Okay, is there anything else we didn't like or didn't think? This might be another one where it's, yeah, gone, cockeyed on us. any of these where I well eh, I don't know might be because of here oh my this uh, seems like with the update like it's a little more sensitive to Uh, this new version of GIMP, like a little more sensitive to me moving this, you know, could just be my imagination. All right, let's try it again. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. That, that all looks pretty good, honestly. Okay, and then uh, export. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely cleaned it up. Now we just need to get those little specks out of there. Ah, uh, that down there is not right, though. What's going on there? I think it's not. Oops. Uh, not facing the way we think it's supposed to or something. Let's try that. Yeah, that seems to have fixed that. And then right here, we're going to add just a line, just to clean that up. There we go. That looks good. All right, let's export. It's definitely better. That's the inside's good. See, the outside still needs some help. Obviously, we're going to have to go back around the outside of it and clean that up. Because we're making such good progress, but we can't we can't stop there and then leave it looking that way. It just isn't going to work. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's uh, let's undo that. We're going to save this. And we're gonna just keep using the same. We could sometimes we can make a separate path, but but why? Let's just make the same. You keep you going with the same path tool. Okay. So we'll go because we want this to be black here, like that. I don't want to narrow up too much. You know, but some. Like I wanted to hit, you know, I kind of wanted to hit the black and the yellow. So I wanted to be you know, close enough. Like that's already kind of going to get touched, so I don't have to do much there. OK, 
Okay, let's just start here. Keep going. And like I said, like right here, like I want to get all of that touched. going definitely the minutia of it right here this is the stuff that just takes the most time but you just got to be patient Okay, we'll keep on going here. There, I don't want to... That doesn't look too bad to me. So I don't want to do a whole lot there. Narrow it up too much. Oops. and okay here we go stroke path export and better but something's wrong there and not enough repair there so let's undo it. Okay, uh, I see what's going to be going on here, I think. Let's bring that a little further in. Mm -mm. Nope. It must be that it's facing... Let's just try it like that. Let's overlap them. <laughs> okay, well then, let's take it all the way through. Well, you know what we'll do is we'll just fix it afterward. Actually... We're going to up this. Let's make this four. Uh, so the only thing is with doing that. Uh, I don't know. That might be it, though. Let's see. Definitely better. I don't know what's going on there. That's not right. We've definitely got a few little things to clean up, but it's not bad. 
All right, let's see what's going on here. Or maybe I just missed them. That is what happened. Okay, so where's my last one I did? Right there. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's try and clean that up. Okay, that is a little off. Um, it's too far. A little too far. Too bad. This needs a little bit of finding. I'm having the same problem here that I had with the other one. going on right there too. Oh, it's like it's not connecting. Didn't connect it for some reason. Well, either way, come on. Let's try that. Okay, so it's 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 another of this situation. If you get them facing the wrong way, it just completely messes you up. So let's try that. It it just it's like it it's it just can't pathfind that way. All right, and we've got this section here, which is looking really ugly. Crazy obvious. I actually wonder if I could just move that down. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay. And export. Survey says. Oh, it's looking pretty good. What? Well, something's going on there I don't like. And we still got some issue over there. So, um, just like thinning it out maybe too much here. Let's bring that up a little bit. And over here. Yeah, I think actually it needs to just be a little bit like that. Okay, export. Okay. It's really, it's looking decent. Something's wrong there. This is always the, the thing about this sort of, yeah, these are facing the wrong way. If 
If I knew why that was happening, I would tell you. I do not. It's just something that's happening. <laughs> um, but knowing how to fix it is, is the most important thing. So, you know, you're just going to run into that kind of weird stuff. I don't, you know, these programs are good. They're not always foolproof, I guess. Um, so, let's try that. Oh, okay, and we gotta fix that there. So we'll go ahead and just quick shot across there. Looks pretty good. And we might as well, while we're at it, go ahead and just. Okay, export and okay, wow, that looks decent. Something is not right there. We've got just a little bit of weird stuff going on at different places in this. I'm going to guess this one's got that same issue. It does. So let's do that. Straighten that up. And let's see if that fixes that problem. Okay. Any others that are glaringly obvious? But I'm not seeing them. So once again, we'll export. Okay. And then what we're going to do now. Let's just try and go in there with the pencil and clean up some of these errant uh, pixels, I guess we'll call them. Okay, so like that should just be Like that. Uh. <clears throat> so what you can do if you have a situation like this, you actually delete. Oh, it's underneath it, isn't it? We'll actually delete from underneath it. And then we can. It's definitely on this layer. Uh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Where's my eyedropper? Oh, you know what it is? I think I know what it is. It's that. So this is sometimes uh, a bit of a thing with stuff like this. It's actually it's a transparency problem. So if I take that off, but there's nothing underneath it. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do here is this is crazy. Um, There we go. And if we really want to smudge it out. It'd be 
better off just doing it like this. Well, we're going to have to fix it post-merge, which we can do easier if everything's merged together and there's not layers underneath layers in this situation. Like, you always want, like, lots of layers, but then when you don't, there are times when you don't. And I wish I could make it uh, make more sense than that, but I just can't. It's just... Certain situations call for different things. Um, but when you're trying to work underneath of another layer, it's always difficult. Because sometimes you're thinking one thing's going to happen and another thing does because of the way the layers are. So layers are great. They still can cause some aggravation from time to time. Especially when something silly like this uh, rebuilding of a <laughs> of a logo but ultimately I think we can get it looking pretty darn good let's export that okay uh, we gotta clean up the outside a little bit spots right there Okay. Ooh, we missed something. All right, but let's try. All right, we're going to use our paintbrush. We don't usually use the paintbrush, but we're going to do it. There we go. Back to pencil and... go okay export okay okay I've still got a little bit around that a that's something's not quite right with that hmm that look horrible it's just something off so let's try that one more time with that Okay, and then actually let's take a, it's kind of another trick I've learned, you take it and just cut all the stuff right along the bottom there. There we go. It's looking pretty decent. Let's export it. Okay, we got to fix that little corner of the end there, and then there's a little bit of weirdness with that yellow in a couple spots yet. But <clears throat> uh. well, I think that's pretty good out oh, this part here. worked out okay it actually worked out pretty good okay good what 
have to fix those in just a little bit. We're getting close. Okay. What an improvement. What a big improvement from what we had. I should have saved the other one we could overlay. It's been a little while since we saw it, but um, yeah, I think that looks pretty good, honestly. Um, okay, so we can save it. Now, here's the other thing. We've got that yellow. I think we want to get rid of that one. Oh, no, we want to... Uh, this one here. So, if we colorize this, we're just going to play with this for a second. But let's say we want to make it orange. Like the other BAM Racing logo. Right? Now we can make an orange one too. And, uh, and we've covered them both. So we can do the other car at a later time. Awesome. That's, that's kind of what we want. I'm not sure that's the right orange, but there we go. Okay. So we have made a logo. And what we started with, we can actually, we're going to get rid of it. We don't want it anymore because now we've got such a good one and it's bigger. <clears throat> All right. And, you know, it's not probably, I, I'm sure if we drill down into it, um, you know, we could definitely, you can always keep trying to make them better. You know, they're certainly, you never have to stop. But uh, at this point, we could call this one pretty good. So uh, that, that looks nice. Okay. So we've got a few more things to do yet. It's kind of a weird color change thing going on there with the, the numbers. Um, let's take a look at our BAM car. And let's see if we can come up with any other pictures of what's on it. I, again, I, I gotta go back to thinking that it's gonna have the same associates that uh, are on the other cars. And we had a really good picture of one. Um, we don't need that. We don't need that. <clears throat> we had a really good picture of one. Earlier. So let's see if we can find that. And this one's different. See, the Call ATT car is definitely different. Ah, this one. Okay. All right, so let's see what we got. We got uh, Blair.com, Misty Mountain. I actually made that before on a on another scheme, and it was ridiculous. <laughs> that one was really ridiculous to get. Um, they've got Safety Clean on there. That's common. Auto Light's common. I don't know what that little one is above SEM. Uh, I'm going to have to to see if I can figure out what that is. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. So, I thought I had another picture, though, of even better than that, of this car, of a side profile that showed those. So, let's go back. Um, see if we can find anything else. Well, this one is going to let it... Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let's, <laughs> we'll try that again. All right. So this is a cool thing with motorsports images. You can zoom in. And what is that? I just... I don't know. I have not seen that before. It, it'll... Huh. Okay. Well, sometimes we can get some clues. He's 
got a Tristar on it. You think that's Tristar? I don't know. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Um okay, let's let's look around and see. There's definitely some other pictures of Schrader. That's that same same thing. It's on there too. But I still don't know what it is. Um Yeah, that's super blurry. That's super blurry. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes you end up hunting things like this. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way around it. You just have to keep hunting. Uh, we can come back to it though. Don't waste too much time on that. All right. But uh, with that all said, um, we've got a pretty good picture of on a lot of these of of what we need so let's get back to to that one that one's fine all right so misty mountain and sem which i think i've got sem somewhere around here uh, let's see if we can find that an auto light so um we're going to go back to some other ones I've made. And we've got the four car. And that's got Misty Mountain on it right there. So let's grab that one. That's why I keep everything nice and organized here because I can grab stuff when I need it so we're gonna grab this okay all right and well, let's just do these ones down here for now it's fine now one thing about this is it's got no it's got nothing around it so let's uh, well we can do the color I or the colors let's do a contrast ooh no let's not do contrast <laughs> uh, let's make it darker there we go which isn't going to show up a whole lot, but ooh, a little less. I remembered what I had originally rotated them to. Okay, I think it is negative 10. Okay. Alright, that looks fine. For Misty Mountain. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Wrong tool. Okay. Uh, where was it on the car? It's kind of just above Blair, so it'll be right there. Uh, new layer group. We're going to call this right rear door contigs. All right. And 
don't think there's anything else on here I need. There is no oh, safety clean. Well, I'm not going to take that off there because it's tilted. Let's close out. We don't need it anymore. Uh, and we don't need that anymore. So let's go to the 45 I know has safety clean. All right, so here's kind of a cool thing. Uh, so you have something new. We aren't learning a whole lot, but we're learning something. And this is, if I want to take something off of another car, and I want it to be in the exact same spot, like a B-pillar contig or something, you know, the, the Goodyear, for instance, whatever it is I want to move, there's an easy way to do that. And what I'll do is I'm going to go to my decals, and I'm going to find it. So safety clean. All right, now if we look at this, it's just boxed in right there. But if I go layer to uh, image, now you see it's the whole thing. The key to this is I need to select something on this, doesn't matter what it is, that's the full size. Okay, so like if I use the main car body, okay, Whatever it is. Now, if you don't have anything, you know, like I, all I got is this, I could just say layer uh, to image, and now it's the full size. Okay. And sometimes that's easier to do, but that works. Okay. And then I'm going to take this, uh, and again, the safety clean here, same thing. I want this. So I'm going to layer to image, and then I take it and I drag it, and I just drop it right on top. And when you do that, it's going to put it right in the same spot. Okay. And then you can crop it back down to content. Now, I actually want to move this one a little bit because I don't think they put it there. <laughs> but this more showing the point. All right. So let's go ahead and get safety clean left. Drop it in. Crop to content. There we go. So that's kind of a nice way to move things quickly and have them in the exact spot you want if they're already there. Uh, especially sometimes you might decide to change the make of your car for whatever reason and you want to drop the template on, you can drop the template on it that way really easily. So, and everything would line right up. All right, so we know safety cleans at the back. Um, we need auto light. Now, I don't know if I have auto light on anything, but I I think I've got it as a contingency that I've saved. Okay. But I don't have it. <laughs> mm -mm. I have auto light. I don't have the right auto white light. So that sucks. So I'm going to have to find it. Because it's got this one with the, the white background. Which I could make, I guess. I guess I could make it, but... If I don't have to, I don't want to. So let's see if we can find it real quick. Uh, oh, I know I need this. So let's go ahead and save that. Two Kentrader logos. There we go. All right, got that. Now let's get log. Yes, just the log. Uh, okay, so they've obviously changed it, so let's see if we can find the old one. And the answer to that is, of course, no. It's something like that. All right, so we we get to make it. Oh, no, that's fine. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll go back to our... Um, Contingencies. Let's go to okay. This PC. Racing paints, and we have it in contingencies. And let's go ahead and open up this one. Now I wish there was a way to invert colors between. I don't think there is though. Value invert. No. I don't think you can do it. I'm pretty sure there's no.
Yeah. There is not. All right, so here's how we'll do it. Um, we will just... We're just going to select the white. Uh, and then actually we will cut auto light out of it. Make this two, okay. And actually we'll take auto light uh, with our eyedropper. So we get the correct orange and then we can fill our white layer. Um, and we'll just do the, the whole selection there. That's done. Okay. And then we'll turn that off. We'll turn this on. And then we can just colorize this to be white. Okay. There we go. And now we have an auto light sticker. Merge it down. Oh, what? Some ended up really ugly, though. Why? Oh, oh, I see why. All right, let's not do it that way. Because <laughs> it, it has to do with how we... All right, we're going to try it again. It has to do with the, the way it, it took it. So let's try it again. We're going to use our... We're going to lower our threshold a little bit. Because we, we just took a little too much. And it's going to make it not look right mm. there we go how about that okay so we're going to color that white anyway so it doesn't matter uh. I think it's a kind of unfortunately kind of a poor logo And I really don't want to rebuild another logo. That is not uh, what I had in mind. All right. Yeah, let's try our fill tool again. All right, colorize. Let's make. Colorize. Let's make this white. See how that looks. Put that on top. It's still really ugly. Oof. Oof. Oh, what a fail. All right. Well, we're going to have to think about this a little more. And I do have one idea. So why don't we grayscale this? Okay. Uh, let's copy it. We're gonna paste it in here. Oh. What? Nope. Oh. I thought I undid everything. All right, so when we go to grayscale, copy, and we're just going to work on it in here. And then we can, I think the reason I'm, I'm thinking this might work a little better, since it's gray now, might select a little bit closer. I could be wrong, but let's try it. Um, so fuzzy select tool. Oh, uh, auto light. Fine. Maybe it's threshold too high. There we go. Okay, and let's try and make this orange. Okay, and then we can select invert. Colorize white 
go, go. I'd say it still looks kind of bad, but we're going to shrink this thing down <laughs> to pretty small. So let's go ahead and scale it to, I think it's going to be a width of maybe 50. That's really small. That's probably too small. How, how big is it on here? Sounds about the size of the Misty. Mm. Let's make it 60. Yeah, yeah. So you see, it really doesn't matter because it's small anyway. So I'm kind of losing the losing my my mind over something that doesn't make any difference, basically. So there's that. Um, these need to be out of here. Okay. Auto light. Uh, what else we got? We got Blair.com. Okay. Okay. And Blair.com looks like that. It's pretty small. But it doesn't matter because it's going to be small on the side of the thing. So that's fine. So it's, it's really is not a very good... Not a very good quality, uh, but we may have a way to deal with that. So let's save, uh, and this is Blair.com. Okay, uh, while I open every window available to me, can trader logos, and let's open with GIMP. Okay. And so when you have this situation, and this happens a lot when you have to deal with crap logos like this, one thing you can do is you can contrast. You up your contrast, and it'll kind of... And it changes the color a little bit, a little bit of that. So you got to keep that in mind. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing... Um, well, I think I'm going to do that, though, because it's pretty bad. So let's let's change that contrast up. And it's usually when you get in a pinch and you're forced to take a, a a logo like this that's not very good. Okay. So then what we'll do is we'll try and get rid of all the you know what? In this case, well, mm, I'm kind of like, because this car's white, I could just leave it as a sticker like that, which I think we'll do. But I'm going to have to end up messing with this on a different one because the other cars, it's on an orange background. So, but for now... That's kind of large. Okay, so this is, uh, it's pretty big compared to those. And it goes from like the middle of the B pillar to the end. So it's kind of, that's definitely, that's definitely too large though. So let's go ahead and uh, scale that. Let's make it. 175. See, that, that R just kind of stop at it. R should be right about in line with that. Well, I can't really use that as a reference. Um, where's our... All right, so let's turn on our wire. 
think it might still be just let's just bring it down just to 150 yeah might be a little better and export yeah that's pretty decent right there okay uh, so then we need sem and this thing which I don't know what it is all right let's see if we have sem so we're gonna go to contingencies we have snap on we have no sem because I know I used it before but I couldn't tell you what car it was on although Uh, at what? Maybe? No. Shoot. No. Okay. I, I'm misremembering. I swore it. I swore he had Sim. Um, maybe the Fittipaldi car. No. No, I don't think so. Um, we're gonna we're gonna search for a minute because I think it's likely it's somewhere. Sam logo. Well, for some reason I can't see this by icons. That's it though. There we go. Knew I had it somewhere. All right, so let's open that with GIMP. I don't think we need the little R. Doubt that's there. Yeah, it's not. Okay. Sim. And, well, let's make it 60. I think that's probably too large, but yeah, it's about no, it's about the same as those other ones. I, I think that's fine. All right, so let's put that there. Okay, and we just need that other one, which we don't know what it is, but we'll come back to it because we can do this, which um, realistically should be fine just to use this like it is because it's going to be white behind there anyway so let's just yeah we're going to copy it in there then up there um with i don't know 350 now that's way huge but it is pretty big it takes up like a good amount on the back so uh, 250 duplicate and we'll head on up flip it over Okay, looks pretty good. Yeah, how about that? Bam Racing, R&B on it. Now they do have some other B-pillar contingencies. And I, I can't remember if there's something on the back. And actually, I can find out. Because I went and took a picture in my phone, I think. Or I didn't. Or I didn't. Okay. All right. So now we gotta we gotta resort to looking at a YouTube video, which um, we're going to check out uh, sh this qualifying. There we go. The M &M's 
just in practice at a 24-12. I'm like you, Mike. I line between what takes to go real fast and what Schrader. I was looking at this earlier today, so that's why I knew where it was. I'm not that magical. So you can see, uh, here's a good example of why this is ridiculous to try and figure anything out. You, you can't see anything. It, it's just, it, it's so many pixels, you know. It's just impossible to, <laughs> to see much. So there's that, but I think the end of that thing is just blank with nothing on it. Yeah, yeah, I think there's nothing on the back of that car, so it's just blank. So that's it. That's the car. All right, so we got to get these contingencies over to the other side, and then I got to figure out what that other one is, which I will figure out at some point. But let's go ahead and. Duplicate those right rear door contingencies. And we're going to call this left rear now. And just in the interest of moving this quickly and not waiting, we'll grab them. Okay. Uh, and actually, we can crop the whole group to content there. That just makes them all smaller. Uh... We'll rotate them 180. There we go. Put it down there. And then everything's backwards. So move these things around. Like that. Yeah, that should be right in line with the L and the I. Like that. That might be a little forward down like that okay export okay there we go okay um, all right let's see if we can see what's on that B pillar so we've got another BAM racing I don't know what that bud logo is is it, a, is it a Bud Pole Award? I don't know what that. Well, I don't know what he's got going there. Weird. I've never seen that on another car. And he's got AT and T on the quarter panel. I didn't see that either. Wait. Well, he has it on this car. I don't know if he has it on the Bam cars. Maybe he does. I sure didn't see it on that YouTube. It's so hard to see anything on something like this. And I don't see much of anything. I de you definitely see that that R and H or whatever it is logo. That's definitely there. Not that you can see much, but and there's definitely nothing on. That's just empty. There's nothing. It doesn't say Bam or anything. You at least see that. I'm going to say that's not there. Does he have AT&T on there? I think he... Mm, it's kind of glowing. I think he might have it on there. I'm going to say yes. Let's go with it. Yeah. So we'll have to get that. Which, uh, which I think I've got. In fact, because... Let's see if Matt Kenseth... Has some AT&T stuff. Mm. This is weak. Um, oh, AT&T. Look at that. There we go. And I think that's the same. Except it's got a, a white background to it uh, it doesn't matter the name of that so let's 
So we can use this ellipse select tool and we'll just select right behind this. There we go. And we'll go ahead and fill that guy in white. Oh, perfect. Uh, then we can merge this all together. And then we can copy and paste. All right. ATT right. We need to make that a lot smaller. Um, I don't know. 200? Even that's huge. So definitely not, but uh, 100. <laughs> and the question is, I mean, it's pretty big. But it does fit like the whole. See, the difference is, I think, on the car, it's just got to, to be smaller. Uh, height should be maybe 100. Let's export. Let's just see what that looks like if we're close. It's not going to be angled, right? But yeah, it's still going to be too tall. We need to we need to make it a little shorter. So let's make it uh, 85 height. Let's see, yeah, I think we're going to be able to make it fit there. All right, so then duplicate that before we start messing around with it, because that's going to go up here. Um, all right. Let's turn on our wire. Okay. We can just arbitrarily rotate this. And what I'd like to do with this side of things is use this line as kind of a guide. This this one here. So let's do that. Let's see if that looked okay. Ooh, well, it's close, but it's a little, little off. So I'm gonna say, let's try that again. It was like too tilted, maybe like that. Let's see if that does it. Oh yeah, there we go. Pretty good, I'll take it. Okay, so we'll move that into a little bit better position like that. And let's get this other one squared away. Okay. Um, well, let's try it like Try it like that, I guess. I feel like we're way off, but uh, not too bad. But we just don't need to rotate it that far for this side. So undo it. I'm gonna move it a little closer. I'm gonna line it up right with this line here. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, another one down. All right, um, let's see if we can find uh, Federated Auto Parts logo. I'm pretty sure I don't. This is just random stuff here. I 
feel like I, I've used it somewhere, but I don't have a clue where, so we're going to have to find it. Okay, so another one to look up. Let's see if we can find it. Um, just looking at this, I can definitely see that safety clean back there, too. So. Uh, is it this one or this? What's it look like? Looks like it's like a... I feel like it had like a top to it. Keep opening this up. It's just this. We're going to go with this. Okay. I think what I gotta do here is just take the white with it. It's got like a silver. Weird. Okay. That. And that. Looks good. Copy and. So with B pillars, I always like to do. Do them in their own thing because it has to be with the Arca car, it has to be tilted. They're, they're not straight up and down. Okay, so let's just do the right side first. Okay. You should have to be about 50 wide or less, if I remember. Could be even less. This one's pretty big, though. Uh, we're not going to tilt anything yet. Uh, yeah, we'll wait until we got them all. Uh, okay, and back to that. Oh, and we're going to need BAM. So fine. That's easy. We have it. We now have it. Um, crop to content. Duplicate. And then we're going to merge it. Merge layer group. That makes it just one picture. Um, which we don't want to do for the big one yet. Well, ever, probably. So we're going to make that uh, width of 50, same thing, just go right there. Um, and then, and then the bud, I, I gotta believe that's like bud pole. I don't know why that's on there that way, but it has it. He's got it on his uniform too. He just has uh, he just has like a small bud sponsorship. I have no idea why. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's what it says, Bud King of Beers. I think it does. Weird, weird that he has that. I don't know why. And I think oh, which one is it? Uh, looks like that one. 
think we'll use that. Okay. We're going to open that with GIMP. Convert that. And then we can invert. That's fine. Crop the content. Copy. And paste. Uh, we need to put these up here in the B pillars. Okay, and this one. Did I make it white and it's supposed to be black? What did I do? Oh, it's probably supposed to be black. Rip. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. There we go. Although we need to make it, it, it's like not black. It's like gray. Okay. There we go. Okay, now we can duplicate this layer. So we, now we have the ones for the L, and we'll lock them all up again and drag them on over. All right, transform, rotate 180. Okay, uh, so when we do the B pillars, what I've found out is this side, you angle them at negative 5. So you go to transform, arbitrary rotation, negative 5. And that's the correct angle. Now you still have to line them up after you've done your, your adjustment. But uh, that's the correct angle. So, And then we're going to go to the other side. And this side needs to be angled at three and a half positive. So transform arbitrary angle 3.5, rotate, and then again you got to line them back up so that they they fit correctly. Okay, let's turn off our wireframe, and then we can export. And there we go. The lighting in here is so crazy with this white. Um, but there we go. We got a BAM Racing Dodge. We're missing we're missing one logo and his signature, which uh, looked like kind of not standard. Sometimes they're just like cursive, but his is definitely... Oh, here. You can see it really well since he's flipped the car on the side for us. Yeah, it, it's not... Not standard not standard so let's see if we can find it I don't know if we're gonna be able to find it oh there it is actually it's that I wonder if I can snake it out of there well, let's try we might be able to Okay. Let's up our threshold. It's a lot of like tiny clicks. <laughs> okay. Uh, somehow we're missing the tail of this. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Alright, let's see if we can take it. I don't know. But it might work. We might have just gotten really lucky. Um... Of course, it's white. <laughs> uh, of course, it is white, which I did not really consider when I was taking that off of there. Because it must be black on the regular car. I, well, on the white car. These, the difference is this one's blue on the top, but... Uh, shoot. <laughs> How disappointing. Uh, is there is there none of them with the white top? That one is, but I can't see anything. Ooh, okay. Well, that sucks. Uh, that's what I that's what I get for not thinking. It, I mean, it's not the horrible end of the world because I need it anyway, I guess. Because I need a white version. But the only thing is, well, all right, let's duplicate it. We'll just hide that for now. We'll call this one black. And then let's, uh, Let's do two things. Before I invert this, I want to make it a higher contrast because it's kind of crappy looking. Okay. And let's go ahead and invert. Yep. All right. Which we knew that would happen, but we're just going to make it red again. On the K. Similar colors. Now, you may say, hey, that looks really bad. Which it does, but when we shrink it down, it's going to be quite a bit smaller because it's no way it can be that tall. It'll look fine. Let's see, so there we go. Um, his his, his thing is just like pretty tall, I guess, but it's not like huge. So let's make it forty height. There's our wire. Okay, so see that's where it curls under, so it can't be that tall. In fact, it's going to have to be smaller because this is going to be up on a roof. So let's make it uh, 30 height. Okay. All right, and then uh, let's contrast. See if we can bring that up. Will that darken it at all? No. No, but let's see if we can darken it eh, I'm not sure it helped I don't think it helped all right so we'll duplicate this now that kind of helped uh, we'll merge that together <laughs> sometimes that works so if you guys use really light things and you just duplicate and then merge them together it'll darken it up nicely so that's a that's kind of a trick Especially with signatures, I've noticed a lot of times I end up doing that. Because they're just like tiny. I think this has to be up on the door a little further this side. Alright. So let's see what it looks like. Uh, it's too high on that side. That side looks pretty good though. Let's bring that down a bit. And export. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I think that's good. Okay. Uh, that dodge on the back probably should be black. All right. So uh, what we do here is we're going to go to 
dodge rear stroke and we will invert and then we'll do dodge rear I had to break these up on a template I think he has them just the same <clears throat> but we'll have him say dodge on the rear like that okay and that is our BAM Racing version 1 that is all done, except for two things. We're missing that little signal. I, I don't know where it is. I really don't. I'm going to have to find it. Um, let's make sure if I can find that picture again of the actual car. Which I can see the car. I really can't see much about it. But it looks like it's got a yellow. I, I'm just going to think yellow on white. Why would it have a white Goodyear or something? It's not black. I would see that for sure. Um, and white spoiler. So our spoiler is black, which um, is actually here in common car parts. We'll just turn the spoiler off. Oh, no. We definitely don't want that. All right, so we're just going to, we'll just, <laughs> we'll do it this way. All right, there's that. Done. Uh, it's got a piece of black tape in the middle of it. Should probably not be that way. It should probably be, but I don't know if I could change that on the spoiler. Uh, let's see here. Tape. What if you take it off? Okay. Which I don't want to do, but I, I think I can narrow it down. Uh, uh, so maybe it's... Maybe it's this. Now let's see. We take the... Okay, uh, no, oh, that's this part, okay. That's red, what, what is that? I don't know what that red is. learning together because I actually have not ever changed the tape. Maybe it's this. Oh, I bet it's that. Near the spoiler would make sense. Okay, there you go. Now it's white. Yeah, now it's white. Okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> that's better. Okay, um, so man, we are looking good. Uh, we are going to call this a finished paint. And I will get it posted up on trading paints uh gonna sign it off here but uh thanks for watching and i'll post this thing on youtube if you end up watching this on youtube and you thought it was worth your time uh, give me a like and a subscri subscribe subscribe be great appreciate it take it easy guys <laughs>